604, I'd like to call the September 11th, 2018 Governing Board meeting of Central Vermont Internet to order. Um, before we do anything else for the sake of the camera, could we do a quick um, quick round of introductions uh, around, the, around the table? If you want to... Uh, Steve Whitaker. Yeah, so so, oh, so name in town. We just we just saw Steve Whitaker from Montpelier. I'm Becca Schrader, I'm the clerk. I'm Alan Gilbert from Worcester. I'm Bob Klein from East Montpelier. Michael Birnbaum from Springfield. Bill Hayek, uh, Middlesex. Jeremy Hansen, Berlin. Scott Bassage, Callis. David Healy, Callis. Rama Schneider, Williamstown. Andrew Gilbert, Cabot. And gentlemen, it looks like we'll have room if you want to come and join us up closer to the table if, you're, if it feels more comfortable to you, especially with the laptop in the lap. I've lost laptops that way. That would be terrific. So just uh, before we proceed, two quick announcements. Bathrooms are through that door that has the exit sign above it and downstairs through the hallway and on your left, there's the two uh, bathrooms down there. And if anyone needs the information for uh, their username and password for the internet, I have it here. I'll just pass it around and Great. make sure it gets back to me or the town clerk will fill me. There's some people who do not cross. <laughs> okay. Uh, additions to or ch uh, additions or changes to the agenda. Yeah. I would like to put forward because of this constant, we've had this issue come up about the um, open meeting law and in particular Mr. Whitaker making some complaints about how things are being handled and quite frankly as one board member I'm kind of confused about what's being asked for, what has been provided and what hasn't. Okay. So I was wondering, I, I mean, if we could take 10 minutes to at least go over that to find out. Sure. Can, can we, let's do that like right after the Barrytown delegate update. So we'll say... Open meetings. And I'd like to propose we put on a possible executive session if it passes the number of votes to discuss pending or probable litigation. Okay, um, so so hold that thought for a second. <clears throat> the reason that gets complicated is because I'm going to leave about halfway through this meeting. I do not have childcare, and as a single parent with two kids without a babysitter for today. Um, I'm leaving at about um, probably 7.30, 7.45. So that executive session would typically go at the end. And uh, while you are all, I encourage you all to have a discussion of such things, I would kind of like to be there for that. You can so, put it earlier in yeah, the Yeah, I'd say we take a break, do it, and then come back, we'll let you leave, and then we'll come back and finish okay. the agenda. Does this cover the open meetings discussion that, um, that Ron was talking about? It's bigger than that. Would that, would what I'm talking about be covered as part of that? It could be, but it doesn't need to be. What you're talking about really could, should be done in open session. Well, yeah, I, well, some of it will be in open session. Some of it. So okay. I, I would say combine the two, yeah. Okay, so let's, let's, let's leave that meeting of, uh, that discussion of open meetings until, so we'll do the, I guess we'll do the executive session right after the, right after the Barrytown delegate update. And what I would like to do is I would like to move the budget 2019 item immediately after that open meetings discussion. So it's 725 item. And then the vision and mission statements. These are things that uh, um, apply to things that I need to take responsibility for. So um, I want to make sure that those get taken care of soon before I take off. Does anybody object to that sort of reordering? So let me, let me re reiterate what we're talking about. We're talking about doing Barrytown Delegate Update, that's me, followed by an executive session, followed by open meetings discussion, followed by budget 2019, followed by finalized vision and mission statements, and then USDA Rural Broadband, and so on and so on from there, with roughly the same uh, timing if we can manage it. I don't think that the mission statements and the vision statements are gonna take as much time as we've budgeted because I think we're in the home stretch here. Does that seem okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> One of the things that may come up um, uh, if we have motions later, because we have um, because we have um, some alternates sitting at the table too, just make make sure that if you're an alternate, please uh, please don't vote. 
appreciate that. And uh, if you're the primary, if you just sort of want to keep a close eye on your alternate so that, so that we don't get ganged up by the, the callous folks, I know how you guys roll. Look out. Look out. Throw a monkey wrench into it. Okay, public comments. Anything uh, for commentary on stuff that's not on the agenda? I believe my comment will be covered in the request to add. Okay, anybody else? Um, yeah, Michael. I, I had a meeting with Delco this, this week, um, and I know David has been trying to arrange for a meeting with Delco. I have learned a few things that might be useful to share, but it doesn't have to happen now. So, if it's not related to a thing on the agenda, we technically have 10 minutes if you want to, to have at it. Well, I'll take as much as I can have. Um, so Belco has an extensive um, fiber network in the state. Um, most of it, and th these are things I learned from them, um, as well as what we learned in the bank. Um, about 80, I believe about 85% of their network is located on either transmission or sub-transmission towers or poles, um, and the rest is on distribution poles. The distinction is important to us because fiber that's on distribution poles has, or, or any cables on distribution poles can be in the communication space instead of the electric space. And um, so if it's in the communication space, Entities such as ours can access it. If it's on, if the fiber is on transmission um, poles or towers, um, we do not have a legal right to access it. It's considered entirely electric space, and only electric utility workers or approved contractors can go there. Um, so that which they have on distribution space can be potentially utilized for fiber to the home. That which is on the other space, the other towers, the transmissions or sub-transmissions, can be utilized potentially by us for transport between points. Um, so that's, that distinction is important and knowing where these are and where these aren't is really important and um, they are very protective of the maps that show where um, for security reasons. Not just security for Velco, but security of the electric infrastructure against attack and such. They will share those maps with those who have the need to know and have uh, uh, provided uh, detailed non-disclosure agreements with entered into detailed non-disclosure agreements with them um, and limited the access to a very few people in an organization. So th there is potential to see these maps later, but not to publicize them, not to share them with the general public, and not even necessarily to share them with our whole board. So those are two things I learned. Um, they are keen to have this fiber utilized for the public good. Motivated both by their general mission and, the, and their owners, who are all the electric utilities, and also um, trying to monetize these cables because they put a lot of money into them and they're not very well used. So they are reaching out to ISPs, and that's why I ended up with the meeting to find ways to utilize them, and they're looking for suggestions and have a few of their own. Um, they're particularly um, aware of the Department of Public Services desires and are hoping to please the department in relation to Coverage Co. and serving the unserved. Coverage Co. is their place for it. And I guess that's a, enough information. Okay. Any other public comments? Okay, uh, Barrytown delegate update. We have one. Sadly, he had already scheduled a business trip for today. <coughs> His name is uh, Josh Jarvis. Uh, he is the CTO of, I don't have it up in front of me, but another, another tech person. So he'll be able to bring some hopefully good skills to the board. Um, 
So, <clears throat> executive session. The way this has to work is that before we can go into executive session to discuss a legal matter, there's a couple of things we need to do. First of all, we need to find that um, premature general public knowledge would clearly place the public body at a substantial disadvantage prior to considering going into executive session. So this is a two motion to process. The other thing that uh, I think we need to know in order to, to properly discuss this is um, a little bit more of the generalities about the potential litigation that we're talking about. Who would be the uh, complainant and who would be the defendant and such. I think there's, we need to have a little bit more detail because I'm hearing about this now for the first time. So um, I'm gonna make a motion um, that our discussion uh, that we need to go into executive session to discuss this legal matter because premature general public knowledge would clearly place the public body in um, Central Vermont Internet at a substantial disadvantage. All right. Well, I'm waiting to see. Yeah. I'm not seconding Okay. So anybody seconding that? Okay. Discussion. Yeah, I agree. I, who, what, why? I mean, I mean, why would we be going and what are we going to be talking about? have a finding on those wild Right, so um, I'm gonna need, yeah, I'm gonna need more information before we can actually find that we would be at a disadvantage. Yeah, I, I, uh, I just wanna point out that you can't say, you can't go into an executive session for a legal matter, you have to be more specific. It has to be a, con a contract, contractual matter, labor relation agreement, it has to be a civil action, has to be prosecution by the state, has to be, um, I, I guess agree. Pen, pending or prob probable civil litigation to which the public body is or may be a party. Okay, so we're talking about a civil action. Okay. I, I think so. Okay. And then we also have to determine what the disadvantage to us is going to be if there's premature public disclosure. Right, which hopefully this discussion we can suss that out. Okay. Where is that requirement? It is in 1 VSA 313. Yep. In the open meeting law. And what is the topic? Yep, help us out, Steve. No formal or binding action shall be taken. Da, da, da. There's nothing about premature disadvantage. Anything under A, okay. little so, A, one E, pending or probable civil litigation to which the public body is or may be a party. Okay, I'm reading the guidelines from the Secretary of State's office and as a, as a select board member who's gone through this countless times, I'm telling you that we have to find that premature general public knowledge would clearly place the public at a disadvantage. If we cannot find that, we cannot go into executive session, full stop. And then I agree 100%. If you read, if you start at the top of 313, you'll see that this particular reason is one of those that's included under the heading that needs to find um, the, the substantial disadvantage. So uh, I'm going to repeat what are what are we talking about we're talking about potential for one the dis the communication junior district being sued related to public records requests that have not been adhered to okay sued by whom by me okay and secondly the district's potential to file litigation for public records against other municipalities who are not providing them okay so my, my thought here is that we are, um, unless I've been misinformed and missed several meetings, we are not, CBI is not party to pending or probable civil litigation against another party. If that's something that we want to explore as another agenda item and we found that that is something that we're going to do, then I think we can go into executive session and talk more about that. Um, the first item though, I think that's probably the more interesting one and um, so the question is now, does the body think that we need to go into executive session to discuss this? Because um, if we do get go into executive session though, I know one person sitting at this table, at these tables who will not be here. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of having that same sort of reaction, that sort of puzzled look around the table. Anybody want to have any, um, want to? What did we fail to do? 
I, I, I think, it, yeah, at, at this point, because I'm not going to, I'm not going to go go into executive session and talk about a public complaint about a, an open meeting law met. That's that's not executive session material. If you if, if there's a complaint to be leveled about the open meeting law, it gets leveled in, in uh, open session, and we get a chance to hear it. And we get a chance to hear the other side, and you know, as a board, we get a chance to decide. Well, we, we did that at the last meeting, and now it's escalating to probable litigation. Well, I, I don't know. I don't. But you're not going to get invited into a meeting involving right. private, any possible litigation that involves you as a complainant. But having said that, listen, I'm just as interested in here. I have not heard, so I don't know what people think has been discussed, but I've been to these meetings. I have not heard from your side, and I have not heard from the board's side. So I honestly have no idea what's going on other than the fact you have alleged that there's open meeting law violations. No, this is public records, not oh. open meeting. All right, well, the public records, I'll take that then. All and right. it was raised several meetings ago, the specific requests that were made, and copies of the disposition were sent to the entire board, <coughs> and it was raised again at the last meeting, saying this appeal to the head of the agency has not been adhered to responded to in accordance with law, and I'm going to leave it to y'all to figure out what to do about it. What haven't you received? A reply to an appeal to the head of the agency. But what haven't you received from the board that, yeah. would, that would cause you to say there's been an open records violation? Records that were provided to David Healy from Washington Electric Co-op. David Healy. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, no, I do. I just wanted to be sure. Well, I mean, you're just, I, I, I got to say, I don't, I've never seen any disposition of this person. Now I've heard of this too. So this is just really I don't remember you asking for records. Yeah. Okay, well, it, everyone was copied with the appeal to the head of the agency. I never saw in it. In email? Never I never saw it. Yeah, I never saw it. Okay, during a meeting, you said, could I get a copy of that? And then no. nobody sent it to you? What, I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. Well, at the last meeting, do you recall me saying that the chairman has not responded to an appeal to the head of the agency and that the, the governing body needs to deal with that because we are a municipality trying to build a credible and accountable organization? What okay, so see? what is it that you haven't received? The data or a response to the appeal to the head of the agency. What, what data have you not received? Polls and lines, Washington Is Electric. Is it in the custody of Central Vermont Internet? Uh, that's debatable. I don't, if one person has it, it, I got my bank account information. That's not in the custody of Central Vermont Internet just because I sit on this board. So I know that's going to an extreme to make it. Uh, Washington Electric gave it to David Healy under the auspices of Central Vermont Internet. Caveat that I will not be distributed. Okay. Now, but there's nothing in writing. Somewhere. So what Jeremy and I decided to do is to send the data back to Washington Electric, so it's no longer in my possession. Okay. Great. I think the request though is that you did have it and you didn't give it to me, right? And when so an appeal to the head of the agency is right. filed, the head of the agency has a five-day legal obligation to respond. And I wrote back to Jeremy and said you didn't respond in accordance with law. And if you're saying that the record has been destroyed, that's a whole other issue. But you need to get so this I'm, right. I'm, I'm going to read my response. I, I gave a response. Okay, my, here's my response. It is my opinion that the records David were evaluating are transitory in nature, that is, they were passing through. And given that there are no further records in the custody of Central Vermont Internet, pursuant to your request, I don't know how I can fulfill your request. But I, that, that response does not comply with law. And I would also, so well, I, I would also say, though, if you go to 1 VSA uh, 317, which gives the exemptions to the open meeting laws, is under number nine, trade secrets, meaning confidential business records or information, including any formulae, plan, pattern, process, tool, mechanism, compound, procedure, production data, or compilation of information, which is not patented, which is commercial concern, makes efforts that are reasonable under the circumstances to keep secret, 
and which gives its user or owner an opportunity to obtain business advantage over competitors who do not know it, use it, except that disclosures required by 18 BSA section 4632 are not exempt under the subdivision. And uh, 18 BSA. Thanks for that, but neither the Washington Electric nor David invoked that exemption. Well, it doesn't, if they do or don't, they may be late doing it, but there is an exemption. I that it, it didn't precede the appeal. The appeal has to be responded to in accordance with law. Yeah. Or we are in, we are outlaws. Okay, so I want I want to point out the interesting and unenviable position that we find ourselves in, where we have a member of our governing body, an alternate, actually actively seeking to sabotage the day to day activities on a well, rather technical this, this issue. Is we don't have to go there. We we don't so, have to as, as, uh, give ascribe. Oh, of course. He's but got a right to make a request. We have course. a right to react how we care. Uh, 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 we of course, but then I'm getting, I'm, but my response is getting mischaracterized and I'm being said, I'm being told that I'm somehow failing in, in my I'm duty. I'm that you fulfilled your obligation. Okay, so the question on the motion on the floor is that are we going to ha are we finding that premature public disclosure of this discussion warrants an executive session? So, further discussion, we can keep having it, I guess. Question? If we do vote for executive session, who will attend that? The delegates only? The board can decide who they invite to the meeting. So, the question before us is, would the public finding out prematurely about Steve's antagonist, Steve's attempt to get information that no longer exists, according to a particular set of rules and timing that he deems not have been met, would them finding out do them harm? Would do CVI harm? Do us harm. Do us harm. Premature public disclosure would do us harm. I would argue that it would, because if this were to get into Vermont Digger with him doing a quote to Vermont Digger about how unresponsive we are two months out of the gate, this is, this is open session right now, so yeah. we've, we've had that discussion <laughs> already. It's just, it's so, 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 yeah. I, 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 I would call the question, so we can vote on this. Everybody ready to vote? Sure. There, was there a second? There was a second. So oh, okay. I'm, going to, I'm going to restate the motion. I'm, oh, I made a motion right. that Sorry. we find <laughs> that premature general public knowledge would clearly place the public body, depends from my internet, mm -hmm involved at a substantial disadvantage in the discussion of this probable pending civil litigation. Am so, I allowed to ask a question? We're still in discussion. I, we haven't started voting okay, yet. Okay, but I'm, I'm not a voting member, so I don't know how that works. No, no, calling the question is a motion that was not, uh, was not seconded or voted on by a two-thirds majority. You just asked if everybody was no, ready. No, I asked if everybody was ready, and I didn't hear anything, and then Becca asked the question. All right, I misinterpreted what you were listening for. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, I have two, one comment and one question. First, the only public records appeal that I have notice of from Stephen that went out to everybody is an appeal to the head of the agency, which was for the minutes of the May 5th meeting, which we resolved, correct? Correct. There's a second okay. one. I don't have the that. The first one was not a, responded to in accordance with law either. It was remediated. Hmm? It was remediated. You got the minutes. There's still a requirement of how, what, how the response gets supplied. You, you including know we can't go back in time, right? Okay, but that's not what you're... Correct. That's not what the litigation would be over. I yes? don't want to waste my okay. proving that you've been harmed so, yourself. Go for it. Can I, can I then also ask my question? Okay, so then my question is, as my understanding is that part of my job is the custodian of the records of Central Vermont Internet. So am I personally liable for this and I never received the request? 
So this is this is <laughs> this is probably a question to be asked within the executive session and okay. talk about the. I can do that. Then. Talk about the details. If I'm included. That's in that's the, question, the question was poll, right? Yeah. So Sorry. I think I think we're all ready. Okay. So delegates only, please, or alternates filling in for delegates. Um, and if we can do this by a show of hands, I think that would probably be better. So how many people find the premature general public knowledge could clearly place CVI um, at a substantial disadvantage in these discussion of legal proceedings? Okay. One, two, three, four, five. So uh, against. Two, three, four, five. Wow. What's that? So it fails. So it fails. So. So I. I'm not sure how we approach it because, quite personally, I don't think I don't haven't heard anything that tells me that the board, either through the chair or through the clerk, has failed to respond. Um, you you may not it, it may not have been 100 percent by the letter of the law, but you can take that into court and they're going to they'll giggle about it. So I, I quite personally, I, I think the board has lived up to its obligations. We certainly we we are beginning. We have problems, absolutely, with the exact letter of the law on some of these, especially the open meeting law. It can be a bit cumbersome, and it can trip you up at times. But I will also say that I think we have definitely stayed within the spirit of the law, and that we try to accommodate at all requests. And I would ask that you don't want to I, I don't know whether we need a motion to sit here and say that the board thinks that this has been responded to appropriately or not, but if there's a motion to be made on that, I would be happy to try to formulate one real quick and put it forward. So, um, given that we did not find that premature general public knowledge, we cannot find that we can enter executive session. So what I'm going to suggest is we go on to your agenda item, which is about open meetings and by extension, public records. And we can have a more general discussion of, of that. Well, that, that would go to, I guess, open records law, the public records law, because apparently I, I was mistaken. I thought okay. it was more in reference to the open meeting, so. No, I'm, if it's the board's pleasure that it be done in open session, then regardless of the rep, reputational risks, uh, I'm okay with that. I, I, I don't see anything wrong with us staying true to the open records law and, and, and staying within the exemptions as a law. And we, we, the, the document described uh, it seems to me to be pretty obviously fall into that number nine. It's not up to you to so invoke exemptions. That's, that, that's a uh, question that- me, please don't interrupt me. Okay. We all get a chance to talk. So I, I, I personally would make the motion that we just move on from this. <laughs> I believe the board has well, you put it on the so, agenda, uh, so now. Point of order. So we have a motion by Rama that we move on from this item. Is there a second? I, is this a motion to table? Is that what you're asking? We didn't I, say I guess it would be a motion to table indefinitely, sure. Yeah. Okay, motion to table. Way to move on. Yeah. So but it a, was your agenda item there, to open it Point up. of order. Is there a second? I'll second it. So now we can discuss it. So there's a discussion about whether we should move on from this open meetings public records discussion. Yeah? I, I'm, I think we would benefit from having an attorney such as Jim Barlow here, a member who has worked for the League of Cities and Towns and really does know the open meeting law and the public records law. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's not here tonight, and I haven't heard if he's coming or not. No, but I, I think we're at a disadvantage because I don't think any of us is an attorney. And I, I mean, I know fair amount about public records and open meetings, but I don't want to advise a board about what to do on something like this. I, 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 it's, that's putting yourself in peril, actually. Okay. To, to actually, there's no this. action for the board to take here unless the, the other thing. The, this is really the chairman's obligation, the uh, head of the agency's obligation that has been faulted here. I'm trying to inform the board such that... Point of order. It seems to me that the chair should recognize the speakers in this meeting and he's given tremendous latitude to all the alternates and delegates 
throughout the previous meetings but i believe that it's proper especially with this discussion to respect the chair and ask to be recognized thank, thank you michael not to mention our um poli our procedure policy says that when the mo when there's been a motion in the second only the voting members should be participating in the discussion so <clears throat> While I think it's appropriate to hear what, what Stephen has to say about this, I want to hear from the other board members, the voting folks, about how I should proceed. I, I, I read you my email. You understand some of the, the context now. If I ought to be doing something differently, I am totally happy to take direction in this case. So from the context I have and the information I have, I would have gone that way. I, I, I don't think that there's any advice that we can make <coughs> in terms of corrective action or other action that should be taken. I, you know, I think that tabling it or, or putting it aside for now is, is appropriate. Okay. Hi. Oh, just for clarification, you, you, you seem to be responding to what was told to us at the last meeting. We were presented with that information <coughs> as if it were pa transitory passing through. It was not for public knowledge and therefore yeah. should not have even been an issue. Uh, so, you know, it was an appropriate response that you uh, you offered. Sure. So we just wait for a shoe to fall. We got. I'm just. I'm waiting for the other shoe because I, I I don't understand what's going on here. This makes no sense to me, and I'm I'm very frustrated right now. Yeah, don't smile at me. Well, I'm not um, allowed to talk. You. Uh, <clears throat> to explain it to you. Um, but it's, it seems to me like there's something else going on here, and I don't understand it. And I'm a little frustrated by that because I'm a pretty straightforward person, and I don't deal with obfuscation very well. So um, I guess if everybody thinks we should table it, I can go with that, but the uncertainty is going to kill me. I don't know what's going on. I give up. I just give up. David? So I, want to be, I think, I mean, it's okay for me to table it tonight, but as far as I'm concerned, being the data guy, I think we ought to have a policy, a developed policy on when we do get data, how we handle data, whether it is or isn't exemption from one of those things should be explored. Um, but all I know is that we ought to have a clear, a clear footing about what we're doing with data when we get it and when we create it. Because the other thing that's going to happen is we're going to be creating a lot of information, whether internally by us or by a, a, a contractor who's going to help develop the deployment plans and engineering. So we should be pretty clear about what is and what isn't uh, available for distribution and what formats available for distribution. So to that extent, I, don't, I think tabling it tonight is a good idea, but we better have, we better be moving towards some sort of <coughs> policy. Um, description of what it is so we all know where, where the parameters we're working within. So, so I, I'd actually, I think I'd like to hear from, from Stephen now if you could give your kind of maybe a three minute condensed version of what we should be considering here. What would you, con what would you suggest that, that we do moving forward from your perspective? From the 30,000 foot level, take the letter, not the spirit, our interpretation of the spirit of the law as a foundation principle of this municipality and that we do not cut each other slack based on whatever information we do or don't have that the the law is very specific about what is to be included in a response to from an appeal to the head of the agency and without getting into mincing statutory sections uh, I can assure you it has not been met with so, and, so, so let me ask you this: If I if I quoted in my in response to you, if I essentially took Rama's very clear description of we're invoking this whatever, and I hand that to you, what, what are you going to do with that then? Actually, it's not your data to invoke no, no, no. a exemption I, I, for a, there's a rather Ram, specific Rama's exemption claim could have been potentially claimed by Washington Electric, but cannot be claimed by this because we have not our policy committee hasn't chosen to characterize any records held so, by the district so 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 what i'm what i'm hearing here is that it doesn't really matter how i respond that we're still going to be in some sort of 
bad situation and that you're going to press on legally regardless. Does that sound about right? I'm going to make sure we get it right, yeah. <coughs> and I'm hoping that we can do it as a governing board. But this, but this is what I'm asking. Stephen, tell me what it is that we need to do to sort of be able to dial this down a notch. We don't have the data anymore. Tell me how to proceed. To be, and, and be as specific as you can because I'm, I'm going to write this down. We have it on video and I, I want to know how to do this right. Hey, John. I believe that if the claim is made that the data no longer exists, it triggers, and I put this in my email to you, it triggers the issue of whether we destroyed public records. Please be clear. I asked the question, what should we do so that we can be on stable ground? Is there an action that we I can can't take? advise you as a lawyer. I'm not a lawyer. Okay. Thank you. That's three minutes. Yeah. So we, we as a public body can't make determinations as to what records we will hand over to people and what we won't. That's all set by law. And I think really what we stumbled into is a disagreement about whether Washington Electric could claim that those records could not be disclosed to anybody and whether that was correct. And if it wasn't correct, whether we can claim that we do not have to disclose the records. So that's why I'm thinking it would be really better to have somebody who's more versed in the public records law before we try to parse this. I think the second problem is I don't think the open meeting law gives the board the authority to override the head of the agency, I shouldn't say the open meeting law, the public records law, even if we do disagree with what Jeremy, the head of the agency, did. I think we can talk about what he did, but presumably Stephen's next step, his recourse, his redress, is to sue, um, to sue the municipality, to, to sue us. I, I don't even know if we can technically override what Jeremy's decided. You know, we could advise him that was really dumb, you shouldn't have done it, or David, that was really stupid, why do you think, I mean, we can, we can do that, I guess. But I, I don't think we can actually change, unless Jeremy wants to ch change, what his response was. And at this point, you can't change your response because it's over with, it's, it, it's done with. So I'm, I'm just kind of stuck. I don't think there's anything else that we can do other than wait to see if Stephen is going to go to court and file a suit against the municipality, and then we'll see the grounds on which he is claiming the Public Records Act was violated. I, I would, and that's why I'm supporting the, the motion to table this, because I, I think we're stuck. I, I, I don't think we can do anything else tonight. <laughs> I don't think that I'm asking. I'm not asking. The, uh, Can I get a timeline of when this stuff happened? I think absolutely. Some of this happened before I existed. Perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. Well, as far as you guys are concerned, anyway. So, um, Stephen sent David a public records request Wednesday, July 18th. That is my birthday. Happy birthday, late. Thank you. Okay, and this was because David had said in a meeting that he got this information from Washington Electric, but Washington Electric said, don't share this with anybody, not even the board. They didn't say that. They just said, don't share this with anybody. Not to redistribute. Not to redistribute. Okay, well, that kind of includes everybody. Okay. So then, July 20th. David responds to Stephen and said he's returned the files. I, I'll read this. I've returned the files I received from WEC back to Bill Powell and deleted them from my hard drive so I no longer have them in my physical possession to be subject to your public record request. I believe that there's an urgent need for clarification of the public records law and the, quote, possibly proprietary data from a public utility. I did not feel like I should be in a position of violating the agreement I made with Bill that I would not re redistribute. And did you return or delete those files in response to his request? Or did you do it before he requested? <laughs> After he requested. After, okay. And so then Stephen sent, the same day, Stephen sent me um, an email about this 
said, I hereby appeal the denial of my public records request for WEC Poland line GIS files as appended below. And he essentially gave me the email chain. I responded to Stephen on the 26th. I said, it is my opinion that the records David were evaluating are transitory in nature and given that there are no further records in the custody of Central Vermont Internet pursuant to your request, I don't know how I can fulfill your request. So this is July. Will you read her your follow-up response to that? Uh, did I have a follow-up response to that? I don't or no, my follow-up response to you. Uh, sure. Uh, Jeremy, we can take it up at the August 2nd meeting, but in my opinion, we need counsel ASAP, as David is not allowed to destroy public records regardless of whether he wants to claim they are exempt. The policy committee is not scheduled a meeting yet and should do so. And that was uh, same day, July 26th. The question. I guess this goes around and get back again. Uh, that portion of the statute that you uh, read seems to say if we are given uh, information on a proprietary basis that we're not to, uh, you know, saying we're not sharing, they, uh, are they then considered protected from this? Or So what I was reading from uh, 1 VSA, Section 317. I don't know what do you call it, subparagraph C or guess uh, the following public records are exempt from public inspection and copying. And I read number nine on that list. That was the trade secrets. And it doesn't say anything about who created the data. It doesn't say anything about who owns the data or anything about that. It just exempt. says trade secrets, et cetera, that, that are exempt from public copying and inspection. And, and we're talking about the data that had the polls from that Washington elected, right. which is proprietary data, isn't it? Yes. yes. It's, and it's, there's a question about that. Who? Green Mountain Power Up makes it data available every year for free to everybody. Yeah, well, okay, yay. Washington Electric doesn't. They're a different company. They're a so. different organization, so they make the decision not to, and they said, explicitly to you, do not redistribute this. Sure. So technically, the board didn't have that information. You had that information. And I'm a member of the board. But as Ron pointed out, he's got a bank account. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's a little, I, okay, I've got a car, but that doesn't make the car in the boards. I mean, it's, lawyer, it's. But I made the request under the auspices of the board. Okay. All right, so. And, and, and they asked you not to. Right. And so, Steve, if, just, if you can answer this question very directly, I will try to be very succinct in the question. You are trying to get us to make a policy decision. You're not necessarily trying to attack us. Correct. Okay. And now, since we are quoting, stat, may I yep. quote the statute? If the custodian considers the record to be exempt, under the provisions, the custodian shall so certify in writing. Such certification shall identify the records withheld and the basis for the denial. A record shall be produced if within three business days. If certification shall include the asserted statutory basis for the denial and a brief statement of the reasons and supporting facts of the denial. So that's under the first claimed exemption, which didn't happen. Second, if appealed to the head of the agency, that's Jeremy, the head of the agency shall make a determination with respect to any appeal within five business days after receipt of such appeal. If an appeal of the denial of the request for records is in whole or in part upheld, the agency shall notify the person making such request of the provisions for judicial review of that determination under Section 319. This is where we so because strayed. his email didn't include the information. Nor the avenue for appeal, which are both explicitly required by law. So he, can't answer the, he can't answer the appeal if there's no records. He, I said you might need to answer for why, how you, why we destroyed records. We don't have an approved That's records destruction asked. schedule. You asked for to him to appeal. He can't appeal if there's no records. No. he. That, Yes. I'm appealing the denial. The okay. denial. Okay. The existed. No, the records well, existed. My my understanding is that if, then if, if people are looking to have a firm policy set up so that we will abide 
we will make sure that we abide by open records and, and public media requests in the appropriate way, which is fine. And I don't disagree with that. I do take the open meeting law and the public records laws very seriously. They exist for a very, very good reason. That if, if what's being asked for is, is policy development on that, I'm going to, I, I will move to amend the motion to table to instead direct the policy committee to develop a policy on open record, uh, public records and open meeting. Uh, I, I don't know what he earned, I, I, I declined. Data collection and data destruction. That was done two meetings ago, I'll point out. What? That direct the policy committee to deal with this. Alan? It, you're, you'd essentially be directing the policy committee to state that we will obey the law well, which yeah, we're going to do, and I don't think we should even suggest that we don't want to obey the law. It's, it's understood that we'll obey the law. I mean, that's not really in question here. What the question really is, is whether Stephen was given the accurate information he should have gotten upon the denial of the request. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah. And it implicates whether or not we have to deal with the issue of destruction of records. Okay. Again, so, for the policy to do. Okay. So I'm going to ask everybody, I'm going to take Michael's advice here. If you want to speak, a hand goes up, please. Now I'm going to call on you, then you get a chance. Outbursts, I'm going to call a point of order. And then if this doesn't happen, then we're going to call a recess. And then we can start going from there. Because, yeah, I would actually kind of like to go home. But we also have lots of things to do. Because I'm here to do stuff. I'm not here to mess around Right? I'm not here to mess around. So does anybody else have any thoughts or feedback about the motion on the table? So Rama made a motion. I didn't hear a second. John? Could you repeat the motion? I don't know that I was here when it was made. Sure. Rama, um, Rama's motion was to uh, table any further discussion of um, the question of uh, public records, because there was a much larger discussion that happened. Or I don't say much larger. There was more discussion that happened before you came in, John. You seconded the motion. I did. Yeah. You did. <clears throat> so are there any other comments about the motion on the table? That sounds like somebody's ready to vote. OK. So if we do a show of hands here, too, I would like to, like to see that. So all in favor of tabling this indefinitely, please raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay. Opposed? Abstaining. Okay, that's eleven zero zero. So unanimous. Let's move on. Budget 2019, tentative revenues and expenditures. Uh, it came to my attention in an email that uh, part of my report that I'm required to produce um, as of the agreement at the, from the last meeting that I'm expected to produce a report describing what it is that we're doing. I also need to include a budget for the next year. So hey, we got to make a budget. <laughs> so um, given that we don't really have much to work with, um, something that the Business Development Committee worked on a little bit was talking about what are some of the things that they would need? What are some of the the money items imminently coming up that aren't like buying fiber or paying for an engineer. And so um, these are completely, I don't want to say random, but they're aspirational numbers picked out of the air. So uh, Jerry mentioned to me that they are uh, reported back to me, the Business Development Committee found that, that they thought that we should engage external business development services to help us writing a business plan in addition to some other stuff. And I was not there at that meeting, so for anybody that was there, you'd certainly weigh in more. And Jerry sort of picked a number out of the air and said, $250,000. I don't know if that's actually how much it's going to cost. Maybe it's that, maybe it's less. There was also a discussion of if we are going to have a treasurer doing treasurer sort of work that we ought to also pay that person. And so I picked a number out of the air and I said, $10,000. Maybe it's more, maybe it's less. I'm putting these out here as line items that we can discuss and hopefully talk about tonight. 
Um, are there going to be expenses doing fundraising? Are we doing mailers? Are we going to let people expense their mileage if they're driving door to door? Um, there's a P.O. box. So it's for an 11 by 11 P.O. box at 11 by 11 inch P.O. box at, in Montpelier, it's $450 a year. These are things that if we're going to have a mailing address that's a P.O. box, we should probably pay for and have in our budget. Furthermore, that's the expenditure side. Then how do we raise that money? 250000 well, it looks like $260,450 from what I have so far, of philanthropic donations. That's a pretty tall order. Yeah, Dan. Yeah, uh, having been at the meeting, the 250000 was the goal and that the uh, assistance of a business development uh, expert would be probably required to help us achieve that goal. So it wasn't that that was going to cost us that that w that was the uh, aspirational figure for so so that was how much we were hoping to pull down in philanthropic donations yeah. for, Phil, for 2019. Got, you know our region donations yes okay Whew. <laughs> <laughs> wow I was like I was like I'm in the wrong business because I can help somebody write a business plan for that much okay so I because I'm supposed to produce this report which should include a budget. At the next meeting, I would love to have any feedback right now about what we sh what I should have and specific numbers right now. If I, if I don't get specific numbers, I'm going to just have to guess. I don't want to do that, and we will. But we will vote. We will make the final decision on that budget on that report at the next meeting. So we can sort of tweak and iron out any details at that next meeting. But I want to have a better idea of of what we're doing right now. I think that we. And I'll couch this in the broader phrase of the executive session topic that we won't address tonight uh, regarding other litigation of municipalities to get the data we need to do our plan. But I think we need a legal budget. It's not going to be reasonable to expect Mr. Barlow as a board member to do free legal work. Okay. So I, I would suggest probably twenty twenty five thousand dollars just for your suits. So I've, I've, I've added a line item for legal costs in the amount of $25,000. We can debate the, the finer points of that later, Rama? Yeah, I, the treasurer, $10,000 seems on the high side for a treasurer needs, especially right now, down the road, that could be very different. Okay, so but, uh, pitch I, me a number. I, I, I would have that. I would even say there we're probably still comfortably on the high side. So we can budget for these things. We still have to authorize any payments anyways. This is this is a budget. So if we come in at 50% of that. But I'll tell you, you as you present something like that, a $10,000 budget for a treasurer to the Williamstown Select Board, they're going to start. I don't have to present this to the Williamstown well, Select Board. <laughs> I do. I do. And, and they are one of the member districts. Right. And, and if, I am representing the town of Williamstown, so if they dig their heels in, you're going to see me come and dig my heels in. I talked to one, one of your talked to one of your excited constituents today about how excited they are to have fiber come to their house. Most of the constituents are. Yes. I would add another in, in terms of a, doing a survey of the member communities between ten and fifteen thousand dollars. Survey of the member communities for fundraising. For our, everything, information and fundraising. Okay. Okay. And, and how much? Fifteen. This is so. This is this is wish list. These are probably all going to get axed. I think we need an engineering firm to start writing, designing a plan, designing a network, and identifying infrastructure that needs to be built or leased. So, do you think we're going to get in, in 2019? So, this is more of a general question for the board. Do you think we're going to get to the point where we're going to be doing engineering of actual fiber? Oh God, I hope so. It's we better <laughs> if we're going to survive. Give, give me a number. I don't know, David. You had a number of engineering from talking to Vantage Point. I didn't get a number from them. So I mean, so as I understand it, with engineering and all of the costs per mile, it's about, like I said way at the beginning, it's about thirty thousand dollars. I don't have that broken out into what the engineer is versus versus what this or that is. So can I say? Const construction and engineering as a line item, and then we can say 20 miles and put it in there as that much. 
I don't think we'll. I don't think that's miles? the best way to approach it. No, I don't think we should go by the mile. Okay, then, then, then somebody needs to own finding this value out. Okay. So, so I'm just going to leave it as a blank for right now. Like um, my business has a um, business model. Mm -hmm. It's um, a spreadsheet with seven different sheets in it. A workbook with seven sheets in it. With hundreds, if not thousands, of miles, all to this point. They're not all for this coming year, but I think the approach we're taking right now is um, not practical because there are going to be way more than, let's say, a dozen miles, and we're not going to have time to discuss them now as a group. Um, as proprietary information and protected and <laughs> exempt and whatever language I'm supposed to use, I might be persuaded to share some of this with a member of the board. Can, can, can you and I meet, because I have to produce this report, can you and I meet one-on-one -on -one and we can sort of pick out parts of that? I, I, don't, I don't really care about your, your data as much as having the, the line template, items, the, the, items, the yeah, template. Yes, that's, what, that's my point. Okay. And then, of course, this is more to the actual execution of the plan as opposed to the planning of the plan. So some of my, some of our items are not going to be in my sheet, but that's where, I might be able to make suggestions, but we also could go to our sister UC Fiber and ask them for some of their early lines also. Okay. Rather than try to read that this way, I, I don't think it's necessary. We, we, we're going to make it our own, but we should start with something that's already there. Okay. So. I, I, I really like that idea, and I would I definitely appreciate your offer of helping with that. Um. I, 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 I had a conversation with Irv Tomei this afternoon, and we actually kind of touched on this. And one thing he made me realize is that what we're trying to do now is something they hardly ever did, because he said they were basically joined at the hip with ValleyNet almost from the beginning. Mm -hmm. So they weren't they weren't doing all this stuff themselves. They hired a firm to do the engineering, to do the construction, to do everything they had to do to create the network that they were envisioning. So I think down the road this budget is going to be really easy. It's going to have one really big line item, you know, that's going to say to Canyon Telegraphy or whatever. And it's going to have a lot of money behind it and then we might have a few line items. So I think what you all you have to do now, Jeremy, is just really throw some darts on the wall. Because I mean, we don't know, we don't know where we're going. So, so maybe we can, with the exception, may, may, maybe we can combine this. Where I will, I'll put together some kind of aspirational budget. I'll send it out early. Everybody can take take a look at it. Bring your comments to the next meeting, and we'll just finalize it. We'll make five or six big items. So we will have something that'll say like engineering and construction, and it's just going to be a big blob. But I will use inspiration for later, more detailed budgets from what Michael and I talk about. Does that sound? Sure. Yeah, yeah. Just for Andy. clarification, I, it, I agree with that because I, I think we're going to end up having to have a partner. We can't mm -hmm. manage doing this. Um, to me, the emphasis then is, and going back to what Dan said, is that it's the money is our it's business development, fundraising, and communication yeah. up front are the more priorities to me. And then, yeah, there's some magic big blob that you're going to eventually give to somebody. But, you know, that's... Later. Well, yeah. When, when can we do that? <laughs> you know? And, like, you would, I would assume our first, if we issued it, like, if we look for assistance, the first thing we do is, like, an RFQ or RFP for somebody just to do the design work or an initial proposal, even. So that would be lower money that we can fit into an initial fundraising thing. I've got so, consultants yeah. jumping at the bit already okay. contacting me, like, yeah, we're, we're, we're going to do this for you. Yeah. Just a thought. Um, DC Fiber's current budget, which is way more than we're talking mm -hmm. about here, is on their web page. Mm -hmm. So if you want to look at it, or any of us want to look at it and see what categories they have assigned to this enterprise, their enterprise, it's right there. Cool. Okay. Anything else about the 2019 budget? I think I have my marching orders. I appreciate it. Um, I guess one point we had brought up at the finance committee. Actually, we had said that we were going to suggest that we have some input into it, but I, I would suggest to my fellow finance committee members that we kind of drop that concept and let you, because you see, you know, if we get in the way now, just 
And again, I mean, the what if if we don't raise the money, we can't spend the money. So. Yeah. I'm I'm just gonna leave that one. Okay. Anything else about budget 2019? So we moved up a finalized vision and mission statements. <coughs> so I want to go back and make sure that I have this in front of me. So you'll notice on your, um, on your agenda that I actually put the draft mission statement down at the bottom. I um, changed the, the we provide to providing. I hope that's OK. I'm going to see back. Um, Governing board draft minutes. Okay. So, mission that we got to with our little whiteboard exercise. We will provide Central Vermont universal access to affordable, reliable, secure, public communications infrastructure that adapts to future community needs. The vision was Central Vermont will become more resilient as residents and institutions have access to economic, cultural, and educational opportunities through high-speed internet services. So if there are things that we need to change or add, or this is uh, the time to do it. Alan. So I, I, I think I indicated last time we talked about this at the end of the discussion that I was going to try and just smooth this out a little bit and, yeah. and, and try and have it with a smoother voice. So I've come up with something here, and, and I think there are enough paper copies for everybody. And I, I thought the work we did was fantastic, by the way. It was, you know, thinking back on it, it's really good how we all got engaged. But I, I just thought that the language could be massaged a little bit. So at the top of the page, what you're going to see is the what Jeremy just read uh, was the mission, and then the proposal of the what what I think it could be redone into, and maybe make it a bit more person friendly is down below. I don't think uh, substantively they're any different. And if anything, I think the people who are going to be involved in marketing and fundraising should be the ones who really make some hard decisions about which language they think is better to use as a sales pitch, frankly. Because we're trying to communicate what we're all about, and whatever does it most effectively is what we want. Yeah, I have thought about it, and that's why I put it in, frankly, because sure. <laughs> I, I think it's something we should be striving towards. And I think, actually, when you, when you talk with the, with the EC Fiber people, they think they're kind of doing this by the right structure, because they're getting a lot more money from businesses and institutions than they are from individuals. So I think what they, what they think they're doing is they're trying to help individuals with lower rates than they would otherwise be able to get. And I think we can do that, and maybe we could also, down the road, look at some sort of structure that's income sensitive. That gets really complicated. I, you know, I, I, don't, I don't think we want to go there yet. You know, we'll be designing a new property tax system soon. And I think we want to do that. Um, but I, I think it is a good, it is a good vision to have because I think it's a real issue for. I agree. I just wanted to, wanted to understand what nope. you're thinking about. I believe in that. Um, I was going to say something about AC Fiber, but I will not. Would you like to make a contribution to support a program? Absolutely. Or we would subsidize <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's start the ball rolling here. Okay. 
I guess I'd like to make a motion to, you know, go with the better, the, 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 the new wordsmith version of the mission and vision of her. Um, uh, oh, hold on, we need a second. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, so we'll do a second by Phil. I, I think it's premature. Um, I think it's excellent. I think it's a good rewrite of the one we reached last time. And I think there may be, I have one item that I'd like to add in, but there may be other people with other items, and we may not be quite ready to vote on our mission and vision until we've had a discussion. So. Well, we have, I mean, so this is typically the way that we have the discussion is the motion happens first, and then we sort of, we've, we've done things in, inverted a bit. That's, that's so, so we technically have 45 minutes to discuss this as an agenda item, so. So I'm just encouraging everybody not to rush to vote for this quite yet. Okay, Although so. I think it's good. So, so, so uh, can I make one suggestion? Yeah, please do. Um, our business plan is going to evolve out of the mission and vision. And um, one semi-controversial topic mm. is um, what technology will be used mm. to, to um, reach these goals. And um, I have a fiber company. I've got no problem with going for fiber. Fiber's wonderful, but it's incredibly expensive. And if we're talking about universal access, um, we may want a hybrid system that includes fixed wireless. And so it wouldn't hurt in my mind if I admit, I, I'm not sure whether it belongs in the mission of the vision at the moment, but um, we could include a phrase like technology neutral or um, using whatever means necessary or some qualifier that allows our mission to not be exclusively fiber. Um, so, so I just like to hear discussion on that. I don't see any, I don't see that it's exclusively fiber. It isn't. It isn't. It isn't. Okay, so I think. Hold on, hold on, one, one at a time. I'm sorry. I believe that it's sufficiently technology neutral the way it is. I, I hear what you're saying, but I think it, by specifying fixed wireless, oh, uh, okay. But secondly, I ran the idea of locally focused was new and it created ambiguity in my mind. So I propose changing the word focused to owned and governed, locally owned and governed. That's a good idea, I think. Okay. So, but well, I think if we can discuss these and we'll sort of try to assemble these all at the end into one big uh, amendment if we can, Rama? Yeah, I just want to say, you know, Alan, nice job. My preference is for brevity. So I, I actually prefer the, the original draft over the proposal of the amendment, just, just based on brevity. You know, it, it's just, it, it's a style of stylistic point for me. Just one additional thought is that uh, this, whatever we wind up with, won't be our final um, uh, mission. Um, we will, two years from now, four years, five, ten, uh, have other ideas. And we'll have different board members too. Yes. Problems? <laughs> we just have to find some more people in Cabot. Who, who's your, your alternative? Oh, great, great. <laughs> All right. Any other thoughts about this language? I, I, had a, I had the locally focused thing written down there too because that was not a particular phrase, but I, I do like the locally owned and governed. Um, I think the vision is a bit more of a total rewrite and kind of like the first one better. The second one, second one's fine though. I'm. I'm happy to vote for this to move us forward. And like Bob said, if we need to come back and say, you know what, this is, this is not working. Yeah, we can totally do that. Okay. You know what? You know what really sort of threw me off about the original? I look up the word resilient, mm -hmm. yeah. and resilient actually means to recover from a difficult position. 
yeah. and to bounce back. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's a negative. I'm trying to think, what's the difficult position we're in? We just, we don't Perhaps have something we'd like to have. <laughs> <laughs> that. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Siobhan? Um, I really like Jeff's point about the the way um, opportunities for people of all ages, means, and interests. I really like that he's included that. I think it states flat out that we are interested in the technological gap and addressing that. And I think that that's really important as a municipal organization with a fairly high poverty rate in the rural area. Um, so I would, uh, thank you. Good, good for adding that in. And, and I would be loath to lose that explicit statement. Otherwise, it's good. <coughs> Okay. Yep. Um, I'd like Alan to explain the first sentence where it's needed. In the mission envision, vision. Yeah, that we envision a high speed highway. Uh, that was my attempt to say we're going to have really fast speeds and we are net neutral. Uh, high-speed highway alludes to concrete and it's very di difficult to find anything in there that points to the technology network that we're talking about building so I would cha I would propose changing leaving the word high and changing the word speed highway into performance network high performance network temperature check but the, the highway is, a, is, a, is in the public mind a, as an image of how the internet functions. It's, a, it's an easily understood concept that is very broadly accepted by the public. And so I see it as a, a perhaps not wholly apt, but understandable as an expression. Okay. Uh, yeah, I agree with you that, that that is kind of out there. I think the only difference is taking digital, because we usually That's refer right. to it as a digital highway. Right. Take it from where you have it, put it in front of highway, yep. and it kind of gets to what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. So we envision a high-speed digital highway where traffic yes. flows freely. Yes. Okay, just change the adjective. Okay. Anything else? Rama? Yeah, I guess the con the word our uh, phrase our goals because our goals would seem to me to be more of a mission statement than a vision statement, and I think what comes after the words our goals are a vision statement. I just think that those first two words. Um, we will help grow the regional economy. Something like that. Yeah, I, I, mean, I don't know the exact word. I think that I think just changing it to we will. I mean that's clear action or um, yeah yeah I, I was about to say there's, there's a passive voice way of saying it that might be more palatable to people but it just it makes it unclear because I also think last oh I'm sorry I, he got his hand up before I started I, the more the passive way of saying it would be to turn the flows freely comma scratch the word our goals are and so we envision a high-speed digital highway where digital traffic flows freely, comma, to help grow the regional economy and broaden opportunities. Or how about, <clears throat> comma, growing the regional economy and broadening digital opportunities? Yes, that's good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that. So you want that all one sentence? Yeah. yeah, growing the regional economy and broadening <laughs> digital opportunities <laughs> for people, like yeah, right. action, thereby enriching. So we get that so growing, broadening, enriching. <laughs> so that's also a nice, like, present tense. This, this is the kind of sentences we would write to <laughs> baffle everybody. Just check the spelling, okay? Yeah. Okay. I, I prefer two or three sentences for the same thought. With no more words. Just, I think it. Shouldn't be a long run-on sentence like that. Who likes it's the a style thing? Yeah. It's it's not a run-on sentence. It's, no, a, it's, it's, no, it's, a, it's, it's a complex it's a sentence. It's a complex sentence. <laughs> so who likes the complex sentence versus the breaking it up? I want to 
refer it back to our wordsmith. Yeah, in deference to the wordsmith, I would I, let know, him break it up into smaller words. <laughs> I'm going to defer to the marketing and communications people. <laughs> That's true. You know, the marketing people are the ones I want to hear from. Mm -hmm. I, so I, I frankly don't care what I say. But they're going to grab taglines. They're going to grab, right. yeah, they really are. It's, 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 it, it, when you do the marketing communications, you are, you know, this is what you want to, to say in your letterhead at some point. But, but, you know, we'll take bits and pieces of it. It's not going to get quoted except, uh, you know, when necessary for legal documents, because uh, you're trying to frame things. You're not trying to uh, parrot them. But what can you most easily remember if you had if you had to give had to give an elevator speech? Would it be easier to have it lined up in three sentences, specific items, one sentence that flows? Uh, look, high-speed digital highway does get remembered. Yep. Okay. What what it's going to lead to depends on whether you got people in government social services listing or whether you got people in business listing. I can I, I can do this vision in four words, folks. Our internet won't. Suck. <laughs> yeah. You probably don't want to put that on a flyer. Although, you know, some people might appreciate it. It's a compound word that says maybe five words. That's actually pretty good. Dear compound. Yeah, so we, so we can put that on the bottom of all of our literature. Our internet won't suck. In Latin. <laughs> yeah, that, that can be our motto. Yeah. So, 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 somebody can go, go work that one out. Okay. But, but seriously, so um, the way I have it here is um, combined into one complex sentence. If somebody has a, a different proposal or something that we can work with otherwise I think just in the sake of expediency Can you read it for me real quick? definitely so I'm just gonna read the vision for now <clears throat> we envision a high-speed digital highway where traffic flows freely growing the regional economy and broadening digital opportunities for people of all ages means and interests thereby enriching the public and private lives of our residents Perfect. Uh, yeah. okay. so um, the, the question is to adopt them as presented. I want to talk about, the, there's a minor change in the mission statement I think we agreed to, but I want, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a motion to amend the, the previous uh, amendment. Or I'm sorry, to motion. amend the previous motion. Thank you. And then we will vote on that, and then we'll go back and we'll vote on the amended motion. Is that clear for everybody? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to move that we amend the mission to, we will provide Central Vermont residents businesses, and civic institutions with universal access to a reliable, secure, locally owned and governed digital communications network able to grow to meet future community needs. And the vision will be, we envision a high-speed digital highway where traffic flows freely, comma, growing the di regional economy and broadening digital opportunities for people of all ages, means, and interests thereby enriching the public and private lives of our residents. This is where someone seconds. Second. Third. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so a second from Phil and comment? Yeah, just one comment, just in terms of, of trying to keep the language somewhat consistent. Um, in the mission, take out we will provide and just start with providing, which I think is the way you had done it um, in the original, but just to, I don't know, flows better to me. Providing Central Vermont residents. Business and civic institutions. So, so if, I, if I hear consensus on that, then we'll just sort of parliamentarily friendly amend, which is not actually a thing, by the way. Is everybody okay with we will provide it? Go to providing, like I had in the. Okay, so we don't have consensus. He doesn't want not consensus. Okay, okay. Would it work to say to provide? Yeah. Does that resolve anybody's concern? To so mission to provide so that would be more the like that infinitive form. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. I the reason why I like the we will is it very specifically states what we Vermont uh, Central Vermont Internet will provide. So I, I mean I, that's why I prefer the we will. I, I it's not something I'm going to go to the mat. So. Yeah, right. Well, I, I agree with him. I would prefer we will. Okay, so 
So he, here's what we can do. If somebody wants to make a different formulation, we're going to defeat this amendment, and you'll propose a new one. Okay? And we can then circle back around. We can try it again. Oh, we can amend this amendment. Yes. And then we, 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 we can, and you're, you're trying to kill Becca. <laughs> She's dead already. <laughs> yes, thank you. I have an excellent poker face, but. Okay. So this is this is where town meeting gets fun, and the moderator really earns their uh, really earns their lunch. Okay. So any further discussion about this amendment to to a strike all and replace with what I what I read? Because it looks like a camel or a zebra. Mm -hmm. We'll find out. Okay, hearing none, all in favor of amending the original motion to what I just said before, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstaining. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Now, the original motion is now to adopt these two things that we amended to be our mission and our vision statements. So moved. Okay. It, was, it, was, it was already moved. What? No worse. It was moved and amended, so now oh. I'm just sort of re restating... What's going on? It's all good. It's all good. So it's, it's floating out there, that motion. Not moving, but it's out there. Any further discussion about the amended motion? Great. All in favor of adopting the amended mission and vision statement, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstaining. Unanimously passes. Thank you, everybody. It looks like I have a few more minutes. I can I can stick around before we have to go. Um, all right. So USDA rural broadband comments and meeting, Becca. Mm -hmm. um, yes. So I had um, come across um, a request from USDA, who set up a USDA rural development, um, who has set up a uh, website specifically for rural broadband e-connectivity issues. Um, and so I had suggested to Jeremy that we might want to, um, they're looking for public comment, and so I was suggesting that the board might want to make a public comment to submit to that website. And I can pull that up to be more specific. What do they want? Yep. What do they want to comment on? Um, okay, so let's see. That's a client side device, right? Okay. Um, so, uh, USDA will be analyzing multiple factors as it sets up the e-connectivity pilot program to make the program effective and accessible to all rural Americans. To best bridge the e-connectivity gap in rural America, USDA wants to hear the thoughts and needs of those individuals living and doing business in rural com communities. Only through your participation can this program succeed in making rural America great again. So please share your, it's from the government. So please share your user and server, service provider feedback, insights, and ideas on the many factors we're considering, including, and then there's, so there are separate uh, responses, sections for rural internet service users and rural internet service providers. Um, and so under the users, uh, some of the questions they have is, how affordable and reliable should rural broadband service be? What time of day do rural <coughs> residents and businesses most need to use high-speed internet? How fast of internet connectivity is needed for business management, e-commerce, farming, ranching, education, and medical health care purposes in rural areas, especially for large data transfers and real-time communications? And then under the internet service providers, it says what tools are available and in use today to check if the internet is accessible at 10 uh, down, one up speeds at households in rural areas. Um, which types of broadband technologies are most applicable for various types of rural areas such as cable fiber, mobile wireless, fixed wireless, and satellite? How is the best way to prioritize rural broadband investments in terms of evaluating lower costs and shorter times to complete construction need for governmental government financial support and other factors. So if we fill this in, we'll get a million dollars? Absolutely. <laughs> so I, so I, I think the, the larger question is the, the federal government, for better or for worse, is asking 
the, or us, the small um, rural ISP, what is it that we could use from them? <laughs> and so, but and so, no, seriously. If if it's that's the sort of thing, where if we're asking for the things like the the grants or you know zero interest rate loans or deferred interest rate loans to get us started these first three years, that can make us be able to transition easily to municipal bonds. Once we get to municipal bond land, EC Fiber just issued another what three Eight four million dollars. Eight point three. Eight. Eight. Right, and they're in. So they're on trajectory to build out all of their member towns. So I, I think we can do this, but the thing that's hard for us, and the EC Fiber told me from the beginning that's going to be hard for us, is getting the money to start. So <clears throat> what I would like, um, like to do is not wordsmith the letter. I would like to either delegate one of us to just draft the letter and submit it on behalf of the board to, to that sort of idea and just to, to say that the idea that we need some money to start and that can be in the form of like a low interest rate or zero interest rate loan and especially with deferred payback maybe like 36 months or something like that but they do have a granting source as well they, have a huge so. they, they do but it's unfortunately dribs and drabs and maybe not appropriate for what we're hoping to do incumbents Yes. That's so, one of the problems are there the are there stuff. grants? Maybe we want to ask for you know more money to go towards municipal and cooperative entities. Maybe we want to ask for more yeah. low interest rate or deferred loans. Yeah. If low there's interest a rate deferred loans is is definitely a good way to go because that's going to sound better to a larger population than grants. People yeah. don't like the word grants. They like the idea that oh you're going to pay it back. Even if it's at zero interest, at least we're making the effort to return the money so perhaps some other organizations could use it as well. I think uh, a loan suggestion is a very good one, a very solid one. That like Mr. Chair, are you volunteering to write this I'm, I'm volunteering for that. So maybe some of that, like a revolving loan fund? We do this yes, at the State of Vermont. Yes, a revolving loan fund. Yeah, we have, we have several of those at A&R that, that get used <coughs> heavily and they're very helpful to the, to the small businesses that need them. Can I also write in there that I would like to see them prioritize some funding or have some specific funding for um, municipal and public and cooperative entities? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, yeah. Um, the USDA supports cooperatives in a big way now. Um, and so they are entrenched incumbents actually, sometimes able to block municipalities. So municipal and public entities is what you're saying. I would, okay. I would leave cooperatives out of that. Fair enough. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. And the, uh, one more point. Um, the cable companies in particular um, <laughs> litigate heavily against municipalities getting funding. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. I know. So I think us have, you know, taking a stand and putting it out here and maybe this also, I mean, put, it, put it out as a press release or something just to let everybody else know that we're commenting on this. I think collaborating with EC Fiber, they will have better uh, facility with the phrases that are going to hit home and maybe either file a joint letter with them or uh, collude on content. So, so, so maybe, I'll, maybe I'll just, I have to chat with Carol about some other stuff right. anyway, so I chat with her and see if she's submitting a and commentary to that. A couple other things. Uh, focus on the scalability of fiber, not these... <coughs> Uh, 10 1 solutions move away from census block oh, right. allocations, mm -hmm. uh, invest in local, not ILEX. You've already covered poll make ready. I don't know quite how to phrase, but we need help all the help we can get on forcing the poll owning utilities, and, and more so in states that aren't Vermont, where it's even worse. It's away from census block. Uh, there actually has been some recent FCC rulings that are very favorable for us to make ready. That's right. You sent me that, that email, and Google Fiber particularly really liked that. But because we have our own poll rules yeah, already, we're not, from that. we're not followed up. We're, we're not covered under that federal poll make ready. But didn't the 248A rules uh, allow for tuner activity to the polls? That's, no, that was no. For, that was 248A towers. is towers. towers. Okay. Our poll utilities need a lot of work in enforcement, and they've, the board has ignored a 
directive from the legislature in 2011. Kurt, your colleague, current okay. commissioner of public service. Okay. Yeah, so, so, so yes. okay. So, 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 is there any <laughs> other like massive thing that I'm missing? Yeah. Do we have a name? Are we Central uh, Vermont Internet? Yes, it's come up. Okay, that's what. I'm, but I was just <laughs> to the press release thing. If we don't have a name or a good name, we probably shouldn't be issuing a press release under our name necessarily. <laughs> Okay. So, yeah, so this, this next thing, the certificate of organization, we are in some way central my internet, but we're, I think we're, may, we may be eventually doing business as something else. So it wouldn't be wrong to be out there calling ourselves central my internet. So let me just go over what I'm hoping to include in the letter, and I will send the letter, and then I will CC, I will send it to all of you as well, okay? What I'm not going to do, though, is send it to you and have all of you give me three pages of comments. <laughs> Sorry, I don't, I don't work like that. Unless we're writing a vision and mission statement, and you saw how, how that, yeah. that worked out, which, which was well, but it took a long time. Okay, I want to talk about low interest rate or deferred loans to get to that sort of municipal, um, municipal uh, bond sweet spot. You could say seed I'm, money, too. Just I, sure. I think grants can stay in. Sure, but, but I'm saying just have them consider creating these op opportunities. So seed money, um, prioritizing municipal and other public entities. Um, I need to talk to EC Fiber to see what, uh, if they're weighing in on this. To talk about the scalability of fiber, and I made myself a note here, the bigger picture of not just focusing on 10-1, that you know, they're, they're, they're thinking small. We need to think much bigger than this, we, we can totally possible. Get away from uh, census block kind of districting and doing grants based on that. Um, and then poll make ready rules, making sure that they're amenable to ISPs. Okay. How about preference? You did say preference for community as opposed to incumbent lax. Yeah, prioritize. Okay. The reason this 10 to 1 is they are protecting <laughs> telephone companies. Of course. All right. <laughs> Just on the, on the poll make ready, is it, that's federal or is that state law? Yes. <laughs> uh, that's, I was just wondering about the appropriateness of that being in there, but I guess if the answer is yes on that question. So, that so I mean, belongs there. It, it probably would have less impact on us, but in terms of us imagining ourselves in another state where the state rules aren't as flexible. I think one way I, I can imagine they could condition any grants they give to an ILEC in Vermont on their full cooperation with Paul Make Ready for people like us. That's nice. Okay, I will include that. Um, you had some, you had a meeting too, Becca? Yes, I item? also met with Ben Doyle, who's the um, Director of Community and Economic Development for um, the USDA Rural Development State Office, and I say state because um, it's both Vermont and New Hampshire. Um, and he uh, said that there's, there is a lot of, um, you know, there's a lot of stuff potentially out there that we could do. Um, a couple of uh, notes that he made were, one, that he, they cannot do because they've done a grant to VTEL. They can't, if we, if our area overlaps with them, they wouldn't be able to do anything that competes with VTEL. <laughs> um, and he also said that he had worked with Michael um, on the Kingdom Connect. Mm -hmm. So, and he said that he was a really valuable resource, so. <laughs> uh, an important point there, and we need John and June to take on state government advocacy is we don't know where VTEL's coverage is. They can say we cover everything and therefore we're not eligible and without a propagation study to know exactly who's got coverage where, we're powerless to challenge the fact that VTEL is preempting us. But that, but that's, so coverage is defined, USDA says where they're covered according to. But they don't know where VTEL's coverage is. No, either. no, I, but if, if they're going to give us or not give us grants, they need to be able to tell us where this, where the, it is and it isn't. Right. And so USD has a map. Mm -hmm. One of their GIS experts has a map saying these census blocks are covered. That's true. Right, but 
even though they're not. Even though they're not. That's right. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, if there's so, one portion of that that's a lot covered, covered. Mm -hmm. the whole entire thing's covered. So, so, so this was something that I, I talked to folks. Um, um, Clay Purvis actually said Middlesex is a perfect example of this, where they had a census block and they stretched out to the what the eastern side and ran up a road, and they happened to get a handful of, of houses in there. It was a, they ran cable. They said, "We're good." And they didn't go to basically the kind of northwestern quadrant of the town. There's, there's no coverage there. So, anything else there, Becca? Um, no, that's okay. it. You should probably go. I should probably go. So I'm going to leave this meeting in the very capable hands of this guy, okay. and I'm going to get going. Have a good one. Thanks. See you. Thank you. <coughs> I look forward to thrilling minutes. Yeah, I'll shoot you an email. Um, before we go on, does anybody want to take five minutes stretch break, bathrooms, anything, or should we just power ahead? Okay. So, um, Becca, it looks like you're next with certificate of organization. Yes, I did receive the um, certified vote from Roxbury and submitted the packet. So, that should be good, and they'll be sending out the notification to the towns. When was it submitted? Last week, I think. Does that mean our probation period has now started? It will start whatever date the uh, the person, the person of the Secretary of State's office, marks it filed. So. And, it, and it's what's the timeline from from then? As far as um, when the public can contest, six, six months. Six months. Any questions, comments? Finance committee. Well, so the finance committee, uh, feel free guys to share and chime in if you feel a need to. So we'll turn that on off. So we met, we met at, uh, on the 27th, whatever day of the week that was. I don't remember anymore, it was August 27th. And we went through a number of things. I mean, I won't go through. I'm kind of using the minutes to go through some of this because what I was doing is we were taking notes. I was taking notes on the things that we wanted to make sure that we came back up to the committee, or to the full board. Um, so I, the first thing was with the charge. And I, I guess here we're just looking for a little confirmation from the full board on, on how we view the charge. Is, uh, oversight of funding was being interpreted as, as uh, ongoing review of the organization's finances. And I don't know if that's taking an over exuberant view of what oversight of funding was meant, but we should clear that one up. The committee is assuming that the phrase bank account research includes a more expansive statement that includes any financial institutions. And there will be, I, I know, on the finance, uh, the uh, business development committee, I noticed that there was a lot of discussion about the finances there too. So I mean, it's, we had discussions here tonight about it. So apparently, you know, money's coming up. Um, and the committee is looking for more precise guidance regarding what is meant by compliance and the phrase preparation for audits and compliance. Now there are, because there are some compliance issues, as I remember our discussion, there are compliance issues that fall outside of the realm of finances. And, you know, I mean, would we be responsible for general compliance or just strictly financial compliance? I don't think any of these needs to be really answered right now. I mean, if you accept that, what are we basically interpreting as, you know, we, we can move forward with it. I don't think we see anything stopping that. Um, oversight over funding, the committee feels we need a set of policies and procedures for financial checks and balances and uh, the suggestion from the Finance Committee to avoid any clash in policy that the Policy Bylaws Committee developed the policy with input from the Finance Committee and then the Finance Committee will develop the procedures required to input the policy. Uh, you know, I, the policy could be something that's really simple, such as you will make sure that at least 
two or three people are involved in any check writing scenario where checks above a certain amount will be signed off by mm -hmm. X people, uh, the, you know, those, those sort of things. And then exactly, for instance, if you said there'll be no less than three people involved in the bill paying process, somebody to okay the bill, somebody to verify the bill and then somebody to write the check, for example, and I'm just pulling that out of thin air. Then they go back to finance committee could sit there and say, well, you know, the, the treasurer is going to be the one writing, sign, you know, signing the check, so we need to set up a process, somebody who will okay the bill, somebody else is going to review them, and they will go to the treasurer ostensibly for signing. Um, We discuss various bookkeeping software that may be used, and I, I think that falls under the, our purview. I would suggest also that if we, if we uh, elect the treasurer, assuming we do, that we also be willing to work with the treasurer, especially if they have experience in this sort of area, on what type of software is going to be best suited for our needs. The question was also raised as to what EC fiber and other municipalities use. Uh, you know, school districts that uh, they use the uh, oh, what's the name of that one? Never. Yeah, yeah never. <coughs> you know, it, it's a very you know that's that's a really big heavy duty, and maybe someday we need it. I don't know. Maybe we need it from the get go. But there are you it's know, talks about it. so <laughs> it's cheap. Though. Um, bank account research. So. Uh, We reiterated the bank account research being interpreted as financial institution research, and we were starting to gather up common questions that should be asked across the board if we're looking at, uh, at a financial institution to use. And right now, I mean, it was brought up, I, I believe, uh, at, at the finance committee that our initial needs are going to be fairly simple. You know, we're going to need a checking account. Uh, right now, we. We're not at the point yet, obviously, where we need to be concerned about uh, bonds, you know, keeping track of things and all that stuff yet, but it will come, and that's why having a treasurer in place to help build this stuff up from the get-go would be very helpful. So if there's any more guidance as far as spe uh, specific questions, I, I do notice we got quite a good list from, uh, from our good friend <laughs> from Orange. We, which is good though, is it, you know, going through it, and it just may be, but we need to figure out, a, you know, just a set of common questions that are going to be asked so that we get the same answers, and it doesn't mean you can't ask more, but at least everybody gets asked, at a minimum, a set of the same questions. Uh, preparation for adult uh, auditing, adults, right? Audits and compliance, so there, there's three in the... In the legislation involving the CUDs, there's three specific areas that really apply very specifically to finances. One is the audit, which basically says once we become operational, and that's a question too, at what point do we consider ourselves having become operational? Uh, I, that's, that's a line we have to define because yeah. we don't, but is it when we become operational, then we become responsible for having an audit done for each year, of course. I, you know, I, I don't see any need to, even if we became operational today, I don't see, I personally don't see that anybody's going to beat us up for not having an audit for 2018. You know, I, I, I could audit us right now. With, with <laughs> <certain. laughs> it's it's not an audit. audit. <laughs> right. So, so, but, but there, but audit compliance will come into place. The fiscal year, it runs from January to uh, January 1st to December 31st for CUDs. Fortunately or unfortunately, that's the way it, it is. And 3075 in the law, section 3075, deals with the budget, but uh, we found somebody to take that off our hands this time around. So uh, Jeremy is, is uh, developing the rough budget. Presumably that would come back to the <coughs> finance committee to be working on. There was also a question raised of insurance and what types, when do we need it. Uh, the committee felt it's important in there. Well, this has to do with the budget report, so I'm just going to skip that part by because we've already. The committee believes it's important that the CUD board and finance committee agendas and schedules must reflect required reporting dates. 
in other words, we uh, to make sure that things are brought up in a timely manner so that the business can be taken care of. The committee was wondering about the necessity of filing IRS Form 990 and other federal financial filing requirements. And I, I contacted actually a whole bunch of different people. So I Secretary of State's office, state auditor, uh, public service department, tax departments, state treasurer, public service department, did I already have to say that? Um, basically, everybody referred us back to the Public Utility Commission. Public Utility Commission did email me back saying they were busy. With specifically, what I asked my son to email, just asking for any guidance they had on hand as far as filings or financial requirements that are required of us. And they did email me back saying they have received the communication and they are looking through what they have. Secretary of State's had one little sparsely populated web page that had some real general information that uh, you could get better on just reading the legislation. <coughs> So on the round table, we had some questions come up. So uh, one question was as to when a CUD treasurer, who's also a finance committee member, would have to recuse themselves from discussion and or voting the possibility of making the treasurer an ex officio member of the committee, but no recommendation was developed. And, you know, we don't have to have, like, to be a member of one of our committees, you don't have to be a board member. So the treasurer, who cannot be a board member, could be, a member of the finance committee. And then we have to think about, you know, when the recusal and the abstentions need to come in. Or a simpler way is just to make the treasurer ex officio member of the finance committee. That gives them equal input with everybody. They just don't get the voting power, which is what would happen anyway. Yeah. And that just seems by <coughs> designating the treasurer as ex officio member of the finance committee just seems like the shortest distance between the two points on that one. Uh, we also, as was mentioned earlier about the uh, treasurer's salary, uh, we were, I, we did ask Becca Schrader to recuse herself and she did move away from the table while we had this discussion at the finance committee. And it was just discussed and the committee does recommend to the full board that we pay the district treasurer in a, and we just said an appropriate sum. And the question was raised as to how this proposal for the treasurer's position applies to others, such as you know, paying other paid staff, business consultant, other things that have come up. And the finance committee felt that in this situation, the committee's charge related only to finances and the treasurer. So we just left it strictly as the treasurer. And that's, so I, I, I guess the, um, Unless there's questions about other things, my questions are more, do you feel that we're interpreting our charge correctly? Comments? I'll take that as a Thank you to yes. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> so far, so good. Um, I think it would behoove us to have a, uh, maybe be an annual calendar uh, that would, so, so that we're not surprised um, that a report is due to the towns on October 21st. Um, and, and other things through the year, you know, having to do with compliance, reporting, blah, blah, blah. Um, uh, and and I, I realize we're kind of in a learning phase and some of these things will be a surprise. But ultimately, we should have it down. Yeah. Good. Kind of significant events. Yeah. Um, uh, that was a great report. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, a lot covered. I didn't hear anything there that sounded like we needed to take action as a board yet. Did um, no, because no. no, the first what that meeting really focused on is getting a getting a common understanding on the committee for the charge, okay. and then we went through those. And I, I took the charge, and when I set up the agenda, I broke it down into the three separate sections, and then we developed a starting point for each one of those. 
if there is direction as to where you would like us to focus, because one of the things that we are going to try to do is to keep to an hour meeting too. So mm -hmm. when we do our finance committee, so I don't know if it'll work or not. We'll find out. But um, that means as a committee, we're going to have to be very focused in what we bring up at any given time, or we need we need to as a committee rethink our schedule one or the other. So if there's a particular point of focus at this time that you would like us to uh, work on, it is, I, I would be more than happy to keep that as a priority on the agendas. The only question, I, did, the, did the minutes go out to the broader group or did they? Mm -hmm. I think so. the finance, yeah. 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 yeah, I think they did. Yep. Uh, and if not, was it attached, it Becca, to something else? There were two things. It to was. There were two things. It was the business development agenda and the finance committee min minutes. Okay. And then the agenda for this meeting included the agenda, the agenda, and the email for this meeting included the agenda for this meeting and the draft minutes from the business development committee. Okay. Uh, I had the meeting, okay, so I had, yeah, I had the warning for the meeting agenda, then I had the mapping, maybe it's buried in further emails. That so, be. let's see. Um, yeah, that was sent out on oh, September I 5th. I got it, got it. Okay. Yeah, Good. I got it, sorry. <laughs> uh, follow on. Uh, being that the discussion at the development committee is we're gonna try to be beating the bushes and get some seat money in place quickly to get some PR done and a, an engineer or a plan written. I think it's important. I first had talked to a bank. I agree that it's better to use a credit union now that I understand the politics there. I think a priority means, I think the commission, the governing board should consider tonight authorizing, being that the certification will come back from Secretary of State, that and a couple of the finance committee who are gonna be signers uh, should be authorized to go ahead and open an, a checking account. Because we're gonna need a place to put any money that comes in and mm -hmm. time is short and we don't meet again till mid-October. Mm -hmm. The only, the part about the signers, I, I agree 100%, but one of the signers should be, and I'm working under the assumption that we elect a treasurer tonight, who may or may not be. But one of the signers actually has to be the treasurer, otherwise there's no sense calling him the treasurer because they can't write any checks for us. So, and then we do want to have at least one other signer. Um, we could even have a couple more if it doesn't occur. I think that goes to the comment that you had on um, referring to the policy committee, uh, the development of policy on checks and balances and procedures, that whole question. I mean, obviously the treasurer should be the primary check signer. Um, the question too about how we want to operate, do we want to operate like school districts uh, and or towns where we have a warrant that's developed that's presented to the board the board votes on that, which is the authorization for the for the treasurer. I see you grimacing, treasurer, to then cut the checks and sign them. So, comment? I just think that would be really cumbersome for a lay board that meets once a month to get every bill paid on time. Uh, I think if if you put three signers so that it requires three authorized signers, where any two of them can make a check, there's enough check and balances. But I the policy committee could come up with okay. bylaws on that yeah. or something. Okay. But I, I would ask them to be even more general than that. And, and because of the specific specificity, and I understand because I was, I'm used to dealing yeah. from the school board yeah. point of view too. And uh, so I, I, I would rather be told how many people need to be involved in the process and let the finance committee decide how to work that through. Um, I, two signers for large checks, yeah, that's probably, a, not probably, that's a good idea. I don't know what we're going to call large at this time. Uh, I, I, would, I, I would suggest, though, you know, we, we essentially, we need a minimum of two people. I would say mm -hmm. preferably three. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you need one person to 
okay the bills, one person to review the bills, and, and, and well, one person to okay the warrants, which is basically reviewing the bills, and then one person to sign. So if we're working, if we have an elected treasurer, the treasurer is going to be generally signing the check unless there's exigent situations. But uh, see, what what because I know what happens, and you talk about the one month cycle, and that's true. And we had a lot of trouble. I know at the Old Orange North Supervisory Union, we had to really work hard to get things into a schedule, so we weren't paying all of, a whole bunch of little niddly piddly late payments. So mm -hmm. they, they didn't add up to much, but they were there, and they constantly annoyed me. So I annoyed other people. We worked very hard to get into the cycle, and, and you can't do it on a, on a monthly basis. You need to have somebody who can get down there and access stuff on them, at least probably a, a bi-weekly basis to keep up with bills and make sure that you know, you're not paying interest on, or on credit cards or late payment on bills. I think it's sufficient to see a monthly report at these meetings sure. of what okay. checks were paid yeah. and have maybe a five or ten thousand dollar threshold that requires two signers. Um, but are, can we just get an account open or the, all these rules have to be decided in order to establish the account? With the, with the signers you have to sign. We have, right. But the, cha but the threshold for two signers could be done that subsequently. Could be but they're right, that they, we have to as a board, because the bank's going to want to see oh, the yeah, minutes from the meeting. Resolution, actually. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, yeah, that's why I say the minutes. So right. Normally, we include them in the, the right. yeah. 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 But, yeah. So do we need to take action on that tonight? We don't have money to, to open an account. Um, so it seems like. I can't make a motion, but I can, I can recommend that we that somebody move a resolution to authorize the finance committee to open an account at one of the credit unions within the next 30 days. Anyone want to make that motion? Um, how about, I, I'm, I'm going to make a, just, just take a point of personal privilege here, and just say what, what, one of the things I noticed looking at the minutes from the business development and finance committee one of the things that is really going to be hard to come by for this, for us, is, is at this stage is going to be time. You know, a lot of people are really pressed on time. I cleared out a lot of my volunteer time. I, I this, this, this organization has taken a, a very high priority for me because I want to make sure, you know, we, we either sink or swim. I want to make sure that we swim. So, I, I, I'm good at, the reason I bring that up is I'm going to suggest a, a different approach rather than say the finance committee, to say the finance committee chair and the treasurer. And, but now we're getting ahead of ourselves because we don't have a treasurer yet. So I actually, if there's a way that we could come back to that after we have treasurer, I don't know if my fellow committee members care about it or not. I'm just suggesting me because I, I have really cleared out my volunteer time. I'm ready to go out and do some of this grunt work. You know, it, it's, well, it, it's part of what's needed, you know, it, so. I move that the board appoint a treasurer of Becca Schrader. Well, what we're, we're, we're in the middle of a, yeah, of a committee report, no. so I had asked Oh, I thought know, that was done. Well, no, no, we, no. we're kind of okay. still moving around that. Sorry. I, I was, that, that's fine. Um, do you want to make a motion to table this agenda item until, or are we tabling, are we passing over, until the question of election of a treasurer is completed I, and then we return to it? I, yeah, I, I will move we, we table further consideration of this issue until after the issue of uh, electing a treasurer is decided. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Yeah. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, motion passes. So we'll let this sit for a minute. Um, I, the next thing we have actually is the Business Development Committee. Um, and sh do we want to do that or do we want to skip over, do the election of treasurer issue, and then come back and resolve? Any, any preference? Skip over. skip over. Okay, that was my sense too. So election of treasurer. Who's reporting on that? Is that from your committee? Rama or 
That, that's a board action. I, I mean, the only thing we did because the presumptive nominee for election <laughs> of treasurer is Becca. Okay. So as far as we did at the committee was she recused herself, she physically moved away from the table and we discussed the salary okay. issue there. Okay. So um, I guess at this time I'll entertain uh, nominations for the position of treasurer. I nominate Becca Schrader for the position of treasurer. Do I hear a second? Yes. Second. Second. Are there any further nominations? And then the only question I had was, that was the whole issue of alternate. She's no longer an alternate, right? right. I have the email here Great. from <laughs> Bruce Johnson, town administrator for East Montpelier. Um, I turned in a letter of resignation. The East Montpelier Select Board met yesterday, and your appointment as alternate East Montpelier representative to the Central Vermont Internet Communications Union District was rescinded as you requested at last night's Select Board meeting. Very confident, you know? That's a bold <laughs> move. <laughs> Is there any further discussion? All those, yes. I'm sorry? Oh, sorry. Um, again, are there any further nominations? Thank you. I'll nominate Becca again. <laughs> <laughs> Already nominated. Uh, hearing uh, no uh, further nominations, I'm going to declare uh, the item closed and ask for all those in favor to say aye. 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 Any opposed? Can hearing none. We can ask the secretary. Cast the no, we can't. Well, <laughs> yes. I have a question. What does the treasurer do? The treasurer is, at least I think as Grounds Committee has, has discussed, it right now takes uh, responsibility for receiving any funds on behalf of the district when that should occur, and then also uh, preparing for uh, expenditures uh, that well, are authorized. Is, is this according to the statute or according to the policy of, of this collective group? Per personal opinion, and then I'll... I'll recognize you. I think it's a combination. Um, you know, we've heard a recommendation to refer uh, to the policy committee, the development of some guidelines, checks and balances, et cetera, which I think also are gonna, going to somewhat determine what we think the role of the treasurer is. I think some of that's outlined in, in the authorizing uh, language for the um, CUD. Um, so my, my sense is it's a, it's, it's a little of both. And I don't know, Rama, did you want to comment? Yeah, well, I mean, it's pretty well defined in statute, okay. so there's no real guessing here. It's Section 3069, it basically says the treasurer shall has the exclusive charge and custody of, our, of the funds of the district and shall be the dis, uh, dispersing officer of the district when authorized by the board. Treasurer may sign, make or endorse in the name of the district all checks and orders for the payment of money and payout and disperse the same and receipt, therefore, Treasurer shall keep a record of every obligate, in other words, keep a checkbook, right? Uh, keep correct books of account. Treasurer shall render a statement of the condition of the finances of the district at each regular meeting of the board. And we can remove the treasurer at any time. It, it, the treasurer is at our pleasure. Um, if we start to extend that responsibility, I think we need to be aware that one, one of the reasons that, you know, the Finance Committee wanted to bring forward the uh, idea of uh, trying to come up with money to pay the treasurer was it takes time it takes time and effort mm -hmm. so if we start to expand on that by policy we need to i believe make sure we involve the treasurer in that discussion so that the treasurer does not feel that they that she's being overburdened by requests for work from the board yeah i think that's I think also there's a point where, as I said, we become operational. We actually have money flowing in and out. We'll have to consider um, a bond for uh, the treasurer um, and also some protection as far as you know, liability, I think. Um, so you were Correct. elected. Uh, are you accepting? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Seeing as you resigned. <laughs> And we already have an altered. Um, anyway, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, it does raise the question about taking minutes. Are you continuing to do that, or do we need to find a replacement for you? 
Um, I think for now I'm good. Okay. okay. Um, so having, can I speak? Yeah, one, sorry. One point that I think that now is a good opportunity to, now that because this is a statutory office of treasurer with statutory obligations, I would like to ask and request that the body make clear that Rebecca is now invited, if not obligated, to call the attention. I'm concerned that we went six months before we got filed for certification, and now we're on six-month probation. That shouldn't have happened. Uh, in effect, I believe probably Becca may have been timid to challenge the chair for not following through to get those certifications in time, but it was a huge surprise, disappointment, outrage to some of us that we've lost six months towards getting uh, off probation. And now you're duly authorized under statutory obligations to call that kind of stuff to the attention of the board. If any such delay is happening that you're relying on a ch uh, another officer or chair for, you, you should not be timid about that. Okay. So then. Um, so let's go back and take up the issue that we were discussing with the finance committee and somebody help me out where did we leave that we were we now have a treasurer yeah we were about and, the bank account who should oh right who should be able we to need open a, the bank account we need i'll make the motion okay if you move that that rama and the treasurer work to secure our initial bank account within the next 30 days can we go with uh, positions instead of yeah, the chair, sorry. The chair, yeah. Right. No, that's the, chair the finance and yeah. the treasurer thank you, thank you. Should we have a third signatory? No, that's just for them to pursue it. Oh, just, I'm sorry. This is just an open account. account. Okay. Open account. We'll yeah. come back if need be, but we still won't have any money to put in the account. Okay. Second. Okay. So that's removed and seconded that the finance chair and the treasurer be authorized to pursue <coughs> opening uh, an account. Uh, I'm sorry, who was the second? Okay. Oh, was it David? Yep. Yes, yeah, sir. Okay. Any further discussion? Um, I, I did hear somebody mention credit union. So is there an expectation on any particular type of financial institution or are you leaving it? Because I'm going to sit down at some point with Becca and we're going to figure out where to start and what, you know, where, where to go. So is there any particular starting point that the board wants us to use? I think we should weight heavily towards nonprofit or member owned or community based that, that doesn't exclude say Northfield Bank but I think the credit unions should be weighted a little more depending on what they offer as far as you know like if we can get like an interest bearing account from Northfield credit for the Northfield savings and we're going to have to pay $500 a month in fees to the credit union obviously we're not going to go with the credit union but I think that Care, carry more weight. Having been through this recently with another nonprofit, uh, credit unions have a particularly nice arrangement for nonprofits, uh, at least uh, the, the one I'm dealing with at uh, State Employees Credit Union. And the, uh, um, so a lot of the fees are waived. Uh, so I would uh, recommend that, uh, again, they're cooperatives, they're member owned and they are uh, localized, which uh, gives them a great deal of more security, actually, in uh, times when many commercial center banks are looking a little bit interesting. Uh, that, uh, you know, they, it more reflects, I think, the values that we've already accepted for our uh, vision and uh, statement and would, would recommend that. Okay, I think one of the recommendations I have in any institutions we start dealing with is potential user of our services as well. Right. Any other comments? Um, do we actually need a motion to direct the finance chair and the treasurer to make um, this a focus, or can we just stand in agreement, having not heard any opposition, that 
that should be a primary focus for the. If I, I heard Rama ask for a resolution in the minutes to take. Oh, I'm sorry, that's right. That, yeah, that was will. for the signer, and the, the, and if we're going to have me on there as a signer, yes, we will need a resolution. The treasurer, treasurer. is already authorized yeah. to be a signer, so if I'm just going to help locate and okay, you know, between the two of us, we're going to reach consensus on the type of account. Do you guys want to be involved in this, by the way? I, I'm sorry, I, I shouldn't leave you out of this. I, I really don't intend. Could you just ask me if I want to make a bunch of phone calls? Yeah, you too. I mean, I, I think the two things are the ease of just make it as easy as possible. I think we also do have a fiduciary responsibility to the organization when we choose which bank or other institution to go with. So that would be the only, the only other caveat I would say about okay. choosing a, a bank or institution. And when it comes to a signer, I, I, it's, it's fi fine. I, I think you want to be careful of making sure the signers can have easy access when somebody calls up and says we, we need to have this check signed or a second person go over it or something like that. That can be a real problem if you have somebody from far away who can't get there very often. Or somebody who's sick. I think we don't want to get in a position where somebody has an illness or has to go away for a family emergency and we don't have anybody to sign checks. Well, if, if the, I'm, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was just saying, I, have we not had a resolution to uh, assign the chair of the Finance Committee? For not yet. Not yet. We're about to do that. Um, then if, if my other fellow Finance Committee members are I mean, we're ex not going to really be expected to be able to have a meeting until early next month or very late this month. Yeah, I can't meet till the 27th or the 28th. Right. So if, if there's no big rush on getting this done, that, will be, that could be the first focus point on, on our agenda is, is to sit down and talk over <coughs> as a committee the finance institutions that or one or more that we want to approach and that would get uh, back in myself some marching orders it's fine I found out what EC fiber has done for banks so I'll throw that in the mix when we meet too so it sounds like we'll defer action on the resolution until the next meeting we'll come back with a recommendation okay that's right. um, is there any issue with us holding an account at first and then changing No, I don't think there's any problem. We could, if for some reason you met, like we felt that whatever the institution was wasn't meeting our needs, or we found a better deal elsewhere. Yeah, somebody's going to have to work. Yeah, somebody's going to have to work. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't think there'd be any issue. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah.
widgets or whatever else we might need. Is Global. that true? Yeah. I think that's right. On that note, may I it just introduce a, a book that's right on point to this, uh, Owning Our Future, The Emerging Ownership Revolution. It's basically going right to the heart of what we're up, what we're up to here. Uh, basically redefining our priorities around capital is not the dictate, but our needs are the priority. So it's uh, Marjorie Kelly, Journeys to a Generative Economy. Okay. So you'll give us a, a full report on that book next meeting? Just send a... <laughs> We're going to move on. Business, yeah. uh, business, business development, is there somebody... Yeah. Well, so yeah. did we report? We, 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 we didn't vote on that motion. Yeah, it was an open motion that... Oh, it had the motion, but we never had the vote. We never had the vote. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> not to, you know, whatever. Yeah. Not, not to be uh, picky, but... <laughs> <laughs> is there any further discussion? So the only Here. point that uh, <laughs> this is why. <laughs> well, no, it's just the one last fine point. Do we want to just for now leave the treasurer as the only signatory, or do we want to include somebody else on there? Because if we want to include somebody else right now, we do need to have that very specifically stated in a motion. All right. May, may I amend the motion so that not only does the uh, chair. Uh, Secretary, the uh, chair of the uh, finance committee, become uh, work with the treasurer to open the account, but uh, also is a designated a signatory of that uh, on that account. Do we hear a second on the amendment? A second. Okay. Any further discussion on the amendment? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Or the amendment passes. So now on to the amended motion. Any final discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Okay. <laughs> Business development. No, you. <laughs> <laughs> You're done now. <laughs> you can keep it free. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to say, yeah, well, that, there's only one thing that we're We've already made a decision. Oh, okay. So you're just telling us. Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> no, we didn't quite make a decision. We, we, brought, we brought a compressed decision. So we'd like a decision tonight. Um, the uh, problem, uh, all right, we'll, we'll skip uh, some of the other uh, side things which already came up tonight. Uh, one of the things we were asked to do was to uh, draft a potential uh, names for the uh, organization. So we agreed on um, six potential prefix suffixes to recommend to the committee after uh, some, some decision that was sort of like the one we did with all the whiteboards the last time. Um, so we believe one of the three starts of the name would be either CV slash Central Vermont OR Onion River because it turns out all of the towns are either on the Winooski or tributaries of the Winooski and or 802 uh, as the uh, prefix and the suffix would be either fiber or net and we got that far saying that this was a question now to bring back to the board and say how would you like to combine these so that we have a name that everybody is happy with? Most people. What? Well, most people are happy with. Well, okay. How the majority <laughs> is happy with. Do you have a recommendation? I mean, so we were, we were leaving it open to discussion. To see <laughs> I know, that's why I asked. Yeah. 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 No, no, we, 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 it, it took us a long time to get to that. Okay. Uh, Michael. I'll get the ball rolling. I recommend Onion River Fiber. I, I uh, just believe that Elmore falls in the Lamoille River, not. The Onion River. So what? Uh, El Elmore is actually on the Sounds upper good. part of the North Branch. And, yeah. And it is. Is, um, no, that's not true. Is it, is it the jailhouse. Part of it. It's not true. Or the jail branch. You know, I, yeah. I, I don't know. Listen, I, I watched your guys' meeting on, on Orca. I, no, it, it is. And, and I understand why, where you were thinking with it. But I, personally, I thought Central Vermont was a much better fit because Onion River just seems to geographically compress the area 
too much. To, but that, that was my opinion. So Central Vermont Internet, the way it is now, or no. somewhat modified? Well, they have fiber. I'm not internet in there at all. I'm going You'd with their suggestions. What's in there? Something? Somebody, I heard somebody What's say that? something that Central Vermont Internet was already taken. Can I ask you, yeah, what's, why, what's wrong with Central Vermont Internet? <laughs> why is it that way? And why, and why not internet? I mean, it's the term that this is. Go ahead. I mean, you talk about marketing, clear and simple. Yeah. Something catchy that sells. And we may be offering services that are broader than internet. Yeah. Point-to-point -point connectivity, dedicated circuits, etc. So I I've been a consistent advocate for Central Vermont Fiber or CV Fiber. Even though we may not. But we may have right. Fiber. Yeah, I it guess doesn't. I, yeah. It's not. It doesn't preclude using more than fiber. It would be fiber between your yeah. fixed wireless access points. Central Vermont Fiber Plus. But that's not our primary. That's not what we're going out. We're going out. We're, we're here be, because we don't have internet. <laughs> I mean, I guess that's my my fundamental question. I, I'm. You know, we're all here because we're underserved for internet services. I'm like, why not just state the obvious and say we're out here to because help we're more than internet services? I mean, again, those are ancillary. They're sure. they're not. I'm, I'm going to recognize Michael. Cool. Sorry. Okay, so internet is not what I provide anyway. The internet is the internet. It's all a connection collection of networks that connect right. together. But you provide access. We to provide them. broadband onto the internet. Right. That's so. Broadband would be a better word, but a, lot of, a bunch of people in a yeah. previous meeting didn't like it. Um, so networks works well, fiber works well. Uh, I think internet's not the best, but I, mean, I, maybe did, some yeah, I guess I just yeah. My concern is that the average person doesn't. We're too geeky, and, I, and again, if you're going to go from a marketing perspective, or if I'm going to tell anybody in town, I need internet. That's just how they say it. They want internet. That's what we're here for. And you know what my customers say? My Wi-Fi is not working. Right. And well, it sure. In their no, right. Well, that's <laughs> even more. more. <laughs> so it, it, they're always going to run up against that problem. Yeah. No, I understand. Yeah. You know, the, the, it, the simplest, of, you know, that makes it easy is CV net because uh, that, that becomes cool. it, it, yeah. uh, quick and easy. Um, it uh, it doesn't require too many syllables and uh, it um, it's memorable. I like it. It, I like it forfeits the. Okay. Affiliation and the success story of our sister C EC Fiber. True. I, I think that the the press, the national press that EC Fiber has gotten, the success, the recognition in the bond markets, we would be well served to uh, align ourselves with that success model. How would they feel about us aligning ourselves and doing that? I, mean, I think they're flattered. Yeah, I think so they, too. Okay. <laughs> Uh, we just go with the uh, EC Netflix. <laughs> 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 okay. We're rich. <laughs> 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 Any online. other comments, discussions? You, you said you are looking for. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, the internet, too, uh, the word just doesn't conjugate fast. Necessarily. We already have internet. Um, if you're trying to compete against other players, then it's a I like CVNet and I like CV Fiber, but not Central Vermont. No. It's a mouthful. It's too much. You are looking for the board to take action. We're getting close tonight. Yeah. Well, well, well give us, you, 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 give us the final authority. So let, it, it would be nice for opening <laughs> out, uh, uh, et cetera. I'll, I'll make a motion then that Lisa started. So I move that we not now. Is this a doing business as, or is this going to be our official yeah. name, I guess, before? I, I think it's going to be a DBA. This is a DBA. Yeah. I so I move we use it. CV net as our DBA. Second. Okay, motion's made and second. Further discussion? I'm going to go with the fiber, just so people know. I like it better. So I'll be voting against this. So it would be called CV net. Yeah, as a DBA. Well, we can discuss all night, or you can move the question, right. and then if the key, like, not right. majority yeah. likes yeah. it, I know. That's why I just let a little I, bit more. If I, mean, I could vote, I would vote against it. Okay. <laughs> a 
course. Yeah, I, on the, um, the the use of the initials EC Fiber, the EC part stands for um, East e Central. E right. yeah. <laughs> and, and that's why that all fell down to EC Fiber. So they, there were good reasons to, for it. It was just a bit too much of a mouthful. Well, so we have a motion, a second. We've had some discussion. This is the motion for CBNet. Right? Uh, for CBNet, yeah. Uh, against that, so I think the easiest way is I'm going to call for a vote, and we'll see what happens. And if that fails, we'll move on. If, yeah. if I may suggest, if, if somebody has a different view, that they move to amend the motion. So that's the motion. Can they, amend, they move to amend the motion, and then we can, you know, we'll find out quickly enough. We'll go that's through good. the Christmas tree. Michael? So I move to amend the motion to name our doing business as to CV Fiber. I'll second that. So we have a motion to change the, or set the DBA <laughs> as CV <laughs> Fiber uh, as an amendment to the original motion. Uh, so it's a motion, a second. Is there any further discussion? Now remember, we're voting on the amendment, so it's a CV Fiber. All those in favor, say aye. Uh, Aye. 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 Better do hands. Uh, I think we better do hands, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. All those opposed? So it passes. The amendment passes. So we're now going with uh, voting on CB fiber. So is that six, four, amended. three against? Yeah. Motion as amended is to vote on CV Fiber as the DBA. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor, raise your hands. Eight opposed. Uh, if that passes, so it's going to be CV Fiber. I got too many notes here. <laughs> That's a DVA, yeah. Um, okay, yes. Did what? Elliot register all his URLs? He was going to, yes, he was going to yeah. register. So that's what he said, said whether, whether he did or not. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> he sent an email. So he went, he didn't want to lose them in case they. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> All the well, candidates. I, I can tell you, as I was watching your meeting, I was sitting there thinking about heading over to my. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I can sell you that one, right? <laughs> we asked him exactly. We asked the. Uh, and when it was going to show up, and we knew it was more than two days. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> okay, um, we you can tell we're getting tired. Um, you think? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let me just sit, figure out where I am in, on my agenda. Review of back burner items. No. Well, did we did we, we finish, finish the, the report? There, um, there, were, there were a bunch of other pieces <laughs> oh. which we which are in the in uh, the written in, in the written thing. One of the. Um, Probable ways of, uh, w which was mentioned earlier, not probable, one of the uh, key e elements earlier was we realized in terms of business development, um, we need some starting capital. That was where we uh, said, and this is actually going to be something that the whole board will have to be involved in. Uh, that we, now that we have at least the uh, preliminary. Uh, status of a nonprofit uh, because all the votes are registered with the Secretary of State, etc. Um, we are going to need some running money to uh, develop whatever we want to do. We've been we've been a, a highly volunteer organization. We're burning people out of the left and right, other than, well, which I'm uh, 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 grateful for. Uh, what um, you know, there are. You know, and one of the things EC Fiber was able to do because located in Windsor, et cetera, it was able to top, tap into local beneficiaries, uh, benefactors, in order to uh, get their initial run, uh, operating capital. So all of us, knowing that we're in different towns with people, uh, you know, especially those in the more rural towns who have uh, the, the greatest need, should be able to think about people that could be hit up now that we're a uh, tax exempt source rather than trying to say we're going to be going for bond money or uh, no interest loan money on the startup stuff because there's a bunch of research development work etc that 
can be amortized in at a later date, but we're not we're not there yet. Uh, and it's to begin to start beating the bushes, if you will, and that's where we came up with the money, the total of uh, $250,000. We, as a group, will, uh, but anybody who would like to sign on to uh, assist would be uh, certainly welcome. We'll be working on drafting a prospectus on what, what will be done with the money so that it's not just, you know, give, give us uh, some money because we're nice guys and we'll someday deliver fiber, but there is there's actually the beginning of a business plan, you know, for what to do for this. This is what we ended up talking about. It has not proceeded beyond that. It was only last week, and, uh, you know, that was, but that, that was where we ended up with. Uh, did you have any else to think? Yeah, I just want what, the one thing that we didn't attach to this was the matrix that uh, on organizational structures options. I think it'd be good to send out to everybody, um, right, on how you this organization possibly could work. Okay, different methods. I think that was we, we didn't get very far on it. I mean, he presented it. He, he presented it. We. Uh, I wasn't sure that would have, was a decision that we came to. So we didn't come to any conclusion, but it was a nice discussion about what are the options that we have as an operating entity, you know, how we go about business as a matrix. But that, that maybe have to come back to the board oh, as, yeah, absolutely. A, 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 as a uh, discussion, just like we've been doing the mission and vision statement. So is that something the committee will probably revisit at its next meeting? Yes, and we'll be revisiting and then bring it back. Bring it back. Okay. 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 Good. Thank you. Um, interest of time, we'll try to move on. Uh, review back burner items, assignment committee tasks. Um, I know we've got a few, I'm going to just take the second part of this first. We have a few things that came up that um, are going to go to policy uh, committee. And um, I guess who else here is on, anyone else here on policy besides myself and Alan? Um, I'll, I'll, um, I'll talk to Jim and tell him that we've got you know, some of these items and see if he can pull together um, uh, a meeting of the committee. I think I have to look back at my notes. There might be another, um, another piece that we need to look at. Um, were there other or any new items that were being assigned to committees coming out of this meeting? I think there's some direction that we know finance has some places that they're going to go. Business development's going to keep working. Um, anything else that we need to revisit or think about? Has, have we had, where did Ron go? He disappeared. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the, um, we had wanted the policy committee to come up with guidance on the, the finance stuff. Well, I yes. Say this so much better than me. Um, the uh, but have they actually been tasked with that yet, or do they? I wrote to be that down tonight. That was what I was referring to, coming from his presentation on the committee. That because uh, I'm also on policy. That you know, I'll, I'll talk to our chair and, and get that rolling. Okay. So do we we don't need a motion for that. No. Then. Okay. No, That's I all think I wanted. I think we're fine. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, other back burner. There's some some of the back burner issues that are listed down below, outreach to other towns. And I don't know, I have no idea where we stand, if we've done any of that, or if that's just kind of sitting there as a placeholder. Okay, so it's back burner, it still stays on the back burner. Right. <laughs> um, net neutrality, as we've, we've discussed before, having possibly having someone uh, come and talk to us about that. And, and, and again, that might be something for the next meeting I can talk to. Uh, to Jeremy when we, we do the agenda. Um, relationship to Vermont Telecommunications Plan. Anybody, any of the committees, anybody working on that? That's something that we need to be, not tonight, but no. we need to be, we probably should spend a half an hour at one of the agendas on it. With having someone come from public service that's or just an open discussion. Underst looking at the statute and figuring out how do we fit into it and what can how can we do our part of it, our region. Okay. Because uh, it's clear they're not doing it. Okay. Uh, and then the final one was uh, Callus Pilot, which I know has been mentioned in the past, um, but it seemed it seemed to me that was just kind of. Uh, up in the air discussion of a, a place that might work, but I don't. I don't think we've gone any farther with that, as far as I know. 
Okay. And I think we, we need a whole lot more information as we um, go forward before we actually even start to consider those kinds of issues. So is there anything else that should be added to the back burner list? Well, I'm sorry, are any of the uh, committees or subcommittees thinking about who we might partner with um, to business development? Okay, just to, well, to provide the service. But, yeah, yeah, and there've been a few, and, and uh, yeah, and I'm not sure where that is. I don't. I'm not sure it's actually in any kind of discussion phase yet. But where's the? Uh, uh, the but there was some discussion in the uh, yeah. business development on that, which revolved around the idea of for people in business. There is an old precept that you don't let some, get somebody between you and your customer. Uh, that uh, you know. So the decision, um, you know, with EC to basically be a funding mechanism for ValleyNet, you know, was one way of handling it. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't seem to have a similar uh, function up here, and uh, we have a lot of providers that nobody really likes already, so, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we, we, ha we then have to reconsider, well, you know, mm -hmm. what is the best mm -hmm. way we consider that partnership uh, emerging, and how would it be done? So that is an area we will be having okay, further we, discussion with, but it, I think it's something that, it, you know, it was very easy for EC Fiber to get into that relationship. But in essence, then, like, they, they become the funding mechanism for ValleyNet. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Which is, uh, which it, it may be what, what we want to do here, but that it may not be. Yeah. Okay. Good. Are we? Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Are we at a point um, where we like, want to start mapping our roadmap of uh, like time frames, like how long is it going to take to get various steps of this process set up, and so that way we can start saying, okay, we're looking now late 2019 before X can happen, and just to organize ourselves a little bit. More that time Anybody want to try to answer that? <laughs> I don't know that we're far enough along to really no, we're not start to even put a timeline together. At, at least that's my opinion. I think we're going to, you know what happens when you're starting up an organization like this? You spend a lot of time at first just getting that groundwork set up. Mm. And then as soon as that groundwork gets set up, things just start happening. Yeah, you reach because a point. Because we've set, as long as we've done our homework, and right. we've laid the groundwork, it's that whole foundation thing. You know, you can build a house on a rotten foundation, build the best house in the world, it's going to collapse on you. But if we do a good foundation, and we'll be, you know, in a matter of, I, I suspect by the time we get through dealing with the finances, getting our filing set up, and, and figuring out who to start tapping for money, that we'll, we'll be off and running. I, that's my guess, that we'll be off and running pretty quickly. Yeah. I, I like the phrase punky, you know, punctuated uh, evolution. And you just reach this point where all the boom, it's going to take off for us. And, and it will. I, I just don't want us to be at a point where we're building a house and we haven't ordered the roof yet because we weren't prepared for that. We started doing the foundation. Uh, no, I agree with you. Well, the suggestion was made about um, a calendar of significant events, which I think could also address some of that as we start to move forward. Not, not just the regulatory kinds of things um, or statutory kinds of things that we need to address, but that also becomes part of the, the business plan and starting to put those things in order. This is making sure that, that, that the horse is out front and the cart's following. Um, but again, I think we're a little um, premature on that right now. We, we might be able to make a calendar without a calendar. Maybe make a, a to-do list, an organization of all the s steps we imagine and, and continue to evolve it, but all the steps we imagine need to hmm. take place, put them in a certain order that we think they'll follow, but not assign dates to them quite yet. That, and that was more what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Anything else under this item? As a secondary issue, just uh, I know it's Central Vermont and all of us think that going to evening meetings is a fun way of spending our time, but uh, can we have some discussion at some point whether three-hour meetings are really appropriate? Uh, you know, by the time you get at this time of night, it's like really I agree. hard to keep functioning, and I would like to find a way of making whatever we're doing a little more efficient in terms of um, passing 
actions off to the, the committees and uh, having a brief report and then go on because we're spending entirely too much time spinning our wheels. Yeah, uh, great I second that. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, shoot for what? Two hour meeting? Two hours, yeah. yeah. We, we also, as we get more into production, we need more frequent meetings, but shorter ones. Shorter, but yeah. So I, I, I would do um, Okay. Um, approval of the August 14th meeting minutes. I'm assuming you have read them. Mm -hmm. we're there is a motion. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion, corrections, comments? Yeah, they look good. Who was the motion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? I'm abstaining. I wasn't present. Such a So Quinn Healy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can I just request that we get uh, use a use a Google Calendar, figure have assigned to one of the committees the task of sorting out who could whose email address we're using, where the calendar is, who's going to get the Google Drive in order with subfolders, etc. Um, I think that's too much to uh, shovel more on our uh, treasurer <laughs> right now. So the email address probably should be more than one person checking that. Uh, that's the, the different layers in a Google Calendar can be color coded for the different subcommittees so that in one view we can see every CV fiber activity cast forward the whole year. volunteer? <laughs> I can do some of it, but I don't want to be the only one doing it. Now that we now that we've picked a DBA and we apparently have a registered URL, we could probably open a separate Google account, although we may have to pay for it. They may not give that one to us free, I'm not sure. Um, and then have set up the appropriate email addresses for, you know, info and et cetera, put all the uh, file system under that. So I and think a web page and all that. Do we want yeah. to assign that to somebody? <sighs> Business Elliot, Development Committee? Committee? Policy Committee? Who would? Elliot. Elliot? Yeah, I hate to assign stuff to people who aren't here. I, I love it. it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think Jeremy would be there. Yeah, let's. There. I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm with you. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to take that as a suggestion for the next agenda. Let's and try to have it up by next meeting now. Let's have it all done. <laughs> you know, we're probably six months. So it can be a committee report. Six no, months I, now, we've got yeah. a Google Drive that's just so chaotic. It, yeah, you can't find anything. Sorry. Okay. Uh, Somebody refresh my memory where we stood on the minutes. We have a second. We have a motion. Did we vote? Yes, we did. Yes, we did. We're, 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 okay. We're, we're, we're done. Let's go. Um, okay, we're getting close to adjourning. Um, I know Jeremy likes to close with this roundtable exercise. So, in uh, in a in a word or two comments. Um, you you want to go first, or shall we start it at? At the end, with John, work forward. <laughs> round, <laughs> round table, a couple of comments. Do you in the headlines? We have, we have to cut down the time of these meetings. Okay. <laughs> as much as I understand the need to get things done, you know, and, and spending time together, the, the three hours by the end is just a killer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with the same thing. I feel like the, 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 last, the last 30 minutes or so has been a little rough. Yeah. Yeah, endurance. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everybody's just going to say. I, I started it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Listen, I just want to say I, I can be can pugnacious <laughs> when it, when I when especially when I'm advocating something, people should not take that personally. Here, I know sometimes that's presented in a way that makes people want to take it personally. <laughs> But it's not, it's meant to just advocate a particular idea, and I want to work very closely with everybody here, everybody without exception, whether I agree or disagree on specific topics. 
<laughs> I just want to, I mean, just, I think we've been making progress and uh, pleased that we can take actions at these meetings. Good. Good. Okay. The little white box that went around, uh, most of you figured out what it is. It's, it's a simple, it's, this is a fancier one. Yeah, I'm logged into thousands of them as admin admin. It's, it's <laughs> <laughs> That's what it said on the bottom. Yeah. That's what it says on the bottom. Yeah. yeah. But, but the reason I passed it around was to show you how simple the consumer device can be. And that little device cost nine dollars. What? Now you can buy two hundred dollar ones, but that's all you need to connect to the fiber and have a thousand megabits per second. Is that symmetric on a passive optical network? Yes. Well, it's not a Wi-Fi. It's just the... Yeah, yeah it's just the... It's just the, it's just the land. That's right. Yeah, you connect your Nine router into it. Okay. I'm going to bring some coffee for Dan next time. Yeah. <laughs> I think the best suggestion of the night was yours, David, about uh, empowering the committee to do as much of this work as possible. I, I think we should work hard to find somebody to do a lot of our work, like EC Fiber did. And I think this job is going to get so much more rewarding more reward. and efficient for all of us. I think we're really going to be proud of what we've done. Want we'll to raise some money, then? Yeah. 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 We got to do Shake that. But you know, there's got to be somebody out there who really wants to be successful with us. You know, t to really work with us to do something really positive, good. Um, Judge Soros. What? Judge Soros. <laughs> right. <laughs> Stephen. Build capacity and local jobs. Yeah. Becca. Um, I just appreciate everybody's support and patience as I learn how to do some of this stuff. You're kidding your teacher. Well, <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I will be a drone. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Yeah.